Welcome to TTM Cast, your sports collectibles podcast with Jeff Baker and Drew Pelto. Sponsored by CGC Cards, card grading all in one place. CGC Cards is devoted to expert grading of collectible cards, including TCGs, sports cards, and non sports cards. And by sportscollectorsdaily.com. If it happens in the hobby, you'll find it on sportscollectorsdaily.com. And sponsored by Gemrate.com. The latest grading statistic from the four major grading companies is just a click away. Visit Gemrate.com. It's free. Sponsored by Collects, the free app for scanning and valuing your cards. Use the app to build your collection and buy and sell with other collectors. Turn the hobby into your side hustle. And now, here's our host, Jeff Baker. everybody and welcome to TTM Cast Your Sports Collectibles Podcast, where we talk TTM cards, autographs, collecting, and a whole lot more. That means anything else Drew Pelto wants to talk about that is in his contract. He can talk about anything. He can talk about food. He can talk about the weather. He can talk about uh, his videos. He has he has carte blanche, right, Drew? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm going to sit here and talk about a pyramid scheme at some point for like the next, you know, 30 minutes. <laughs> I know. You know what? I think we need to rent, rent, rent and rave next week. What do you think? I'll see if I can if I can come up with something. Yeah. We All right. We, we, do, we do a Drew Pelto rant and rave segment if you're new to the, the show. Um, yeah. You know what? It is season five, episode 46, November 18th. It's a very important day. There's two famous birthdays. On today's date, do you know what I do? Not, I know you know one of them because we went over it on the pre-show. But do you know the the famous, famous, famous uh, person or thing that was born on this date? I don't. What is it? Mickey Mouse's birthday? Ah, okay. Today is Mickey Mouse's birthday, but it also is my daughter's birthday, Ruthie Baker. She is twenty-four years old. Drew getting old. <laughs> she's 24 my son's 27 she's 24 we're getting old we'll do a little uh uh ttm cast stamp approval on that a little later okay all right sounds good so happy birthday Ru. uh it is uh we have on the other end of the line his name is Rupelto. he is the golden voice he is the man he knows more about ttming than just about anyone in the world and about in-person autographs he is like the best in person autograph as well. So uh, I'm going to stop blowing smoke up his ass. Make sure you check out his YouTube channel, uh, DFW Graffer. DFW Graffer. If you're not following Drew on social media, you're missing something because he has cutting edge stuff and he always has stuff about his beloved Cleveland Browns, right, Drew? Yes. And uh, the season, I think, it may go exactly as I predicted. Because if you remember a few weeks back when the season first started, and I said, I think the Browns going to have a really great first half and completely fall apart and blow at the second half. And what happened? They had that great win against Baltimore right there to kind of make the transition into the second half of the year there. Everything's looking good. And now uh, Deshaun Watson is done for the year needing shoulder surgery. It's like, yep, here's, you know here's, here's where it all begins, just as I called it. So, yeah. My, my fantasy football team is – Post okay. My yeah. first, my starting quarterback was Joe Barrow, so Ooh. he's he's done for the year. My uh, my backup quarterback was uh, Mac Jones. He sucks. Ooh. My yeah. other my other quarterback is was uh, uh what's the name the guy from the the Jets? Oh, mm-hmm. uh, Aaron Rodgers. I had him. Yep. Yep. He 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 did nothing. And now the only guy I have left is I have Love from Green Bay. There are six starting quarterbacks from week one who are out for the season now. This is yeah, and four of them were on my team. <laughs> yeah. It's just unprecedented at this point. I mean, you're having a guy like Josh Dobbs who's making a contribution in multiple places. It's like, what the hell is going on wait, here? Wait, wait, wait. You want, for a fifth round pick. you want more? I have Justin Jefferson. Oh. He has a, yeah, he got hurt. He has another squat. Yep. And I had Nick Chubb. Yeah, well. You, you, think I've had, you think I've had a tough uh, fantasy football season? Yeah, yeah. I hate it. I hate fantasy yeah. football. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I don't know why. I don't know why I do it, Drew. I really don't. That's why I haven't played in like six years now. Which is no. I I I don't want. I don't need that stress for something that I do just to sit back and watch and relax. So, I know. Yeah. I thought I'd be safe because we're not making picks this year. I'm like, okay, I'll just do fantasy and I won't get. I won't get berated. But oh my god, every week I'm just like, what the hell am I doing watching this football yeah. and playing fantasy? Football. I don't know. I, 
It's just not fun anymore, you know? Yep, yep. All right, bud. Well, you know, guys, first of all, I, I let me introduce myself because I've been talking now for 10 minutes and didn't introduce myself. My name is Jeff Baker, talking to you from Boston, Massachusetts. We have been doing this program for five years. Drew, Drew, Drew's been on for two, two and a half years? Yeah, somewhere around there. That's about right. Yeah, and I've been doing it for five. So we we have fun. We talk uh, cards and collecting and autographs. If you if you're new to the program, welcome. If uh, you've been with us all, all along, we really appreciate that. Um, I just want you know I went to the I'm involved with the Bob Feller uh, Active Valor Award Foundation, and this is a, a an awards that um, we present are presented to uh, former major league players, current major league players, and people in the military that have helped pr uh, promote um, the things that Bob Feller was. Bob Feller was a midshipman in the Navy. He was a pitcher in the major leagues. He was a Hall of Famer. And uh, we, we honor those people that uh, exemplify Bob Feller's um, life in terms of patriotism and in terms of the country. Uh, I help out on their podcast and, and I help out getting autographs. Uh, we had a, our um, award ceremony this this Wednesday in Washington, D.C. It was at the uh, Naval Memorial Building, which was fantastic. Uh, we had John Gray from the Texas Rangers was there with his wife, and uh, he was outstanding. What a, what a nice kid. Uh, you know, he's been in the major leagues for nine years, but he, when I went, when I, was, I interviewed him at the show, and I'm, I'm looking at him in the, I'm like, this is a kid. You know what I mean? He's still a, yeah. he's still a kid. So yep. it was nice, yep. nice to talk to him. He was, he was um very cordial signing autographs for everyone. I got a ball signed and a couple cards signed. Um, Carlton Fisk was our hall of fame award presentation. He did not show up because he said he had uh problems traveling with his knee or something. I don't know, but we did, uh, we did get a video from Carlton. So, um, it was a it was a nice night all in all that we had tons of stuff raffled raffled off a lot of Bob Fella stuff Drew so uh, a lot of cool uh, Bob Fella stuff there was like a Frank Howard ball and a photo and uh, there was a Stephen Kwan signed jer Guardian jersey uh, nice. I said did you get the picture I sent you No I got a I got a message from you there but no photo came with it Oh all. that was what it was a it was a Stephen Kwan jersey that went for okay. about one hundred and twenty five bucks uh, I actually won a Terry, Terry Francona ball a signed ball a card and a um shirt from they did they gave it out at the thank you thank you tito nice yeah so let me, let me hold it up I, I was hoping it was a 2xl because i was going to send it to you oh yeah so it says thank it says thank you tito with the guardians on it it's a it's an extra large so i don't know what okay. i'm gonna do maybe we'll maybe we'll give it away to one of our listeners uh mm -hmm. but yeah uh, if it was a double, it would have been it would have been in your your lap for Christmas. <laughs> right. So I got that as part of a package, forty bucks for the the t shirt, nice. the ball, and the card. That's really good. Wow. Yeah. So there was a ton of there was a ton of um, a ton of stuff that went for good good money. Um, that raised we we raised almost three thousand dollars for scholarships for um, veterans in their in nice. their in their kids. So it was a nice night. Um, we had we had um. When we we went had dinner after at the Ebbets Old Ebbets Grill, which is a, a cool restaurant in D.C. Uh, Paula and I went to uh, I think it's called Ollie's Ollie's uh, Hamburger Cart, which is like a greasy spoon place. Okay, that yep. we went that we went before. That's been in. It's like a one of those Washington institution places. You know, it's all it, it's it still looks like it's from the forties or fifties when you go in there. It's really cool. Nice. So, have you been to D.C. in a while? I have. I was actually I was there for a day, uh, not this past summer, but the summer before last. Time I was on the road trip there with Aaron. We stopped in and checked out DC for a day before we went on to the Harrisburg uh, Senators game. And then a few years ago, uh, my wife and I went and spent close to a week there. We definitely want to go back again because I mean I was hobbling around on a bad ankle at that point, so it was like hard to get around and see anything that we wanted to really see. Which I mean, we still got around to quite a lot of it, but there's a lot that we missed. So we got to go a second time. Yeah, it's a really fun city to. Um... The, their metro system is really really nice it's we yeah. we 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 didn't have a car we we flew into reagan and we took the metro right to our hotel which was kind of maybe a couple blocks away from the the white house and yeah. you know we didn't we didn't do the, the touristy thing because we were only we we literally flew in on uh wednesday morning the, the event was wednesday night we flew out first thing thursday morning but um Washington's a great walking city. You know, everything's right there. 
uh it's it's just really neat and most of the stuff is free so it's uh it's kind of cool i we had um as part of the group we could have gone to either a capital tour or the, the pentagon tour and we just okay. didn't have time to do that because they, they did it kind of they did they did the pentagon tour i think the more the morning of the event which we were flying and then they did the, the capital tour the morning after the event and we were flying out so we didn't we didn't do it this time but um it's a really great event and uh it's free so you know next year i'll, I'll mention every mention to everyone again uh there's no charge to go to the event and the guys are really uh keen on signing autographs you know they're really into signing autographs the the guys that have been there we had brian buxton there uh last year and um a couple of you know they, they always have guys there Brooks Robinson was a guest at one point. Uh, Joe Torrey. They've had all, they've had a lot of uh, Hall of Famers as well. So I'll let everyone know about it next year. Um, you know, if you're in the D.C. area, it, it's a really nice event, um, and it's very. You can see it, it makes me proud of our our um, the people that are in our military, the quality of people that are in the military. We had a, there was a couple of Marines that did speeches. There was a couple of Navy guys that did speeches the secretary of the navy was there he did a speech and it, it makes you feel good that these people are are fighting for us you mm -hmm. know what i mean yeah, it, exactly. you're like i'm glad these guys are on, are on our side because they yeah. they they they're, they're great people and they're really uh passionate about what they do and uh you know th these are these are the cream of the crop in terms of of um of what our country produces and it makes me proud that that we have a we we have these people on our side I, I, yeah. and, and sometimes you forget about that you know what i mean you see all the bad all the bad stuff that's going on with the protesting and the you know the the wars and and is in uh, israel and just all this bad bad stuff that's going on but you kind of you when you when you you go to an event like this and you say, you know what, there's a lot of great people out there that are doing a lot of good things. And it was nice to acknowledge these people. And um, it, it was just a nice night. Nice. I'll definitely see if I can get out to it next year then, if I can. Yeah, I think you'd, you'd, have, fun. you'd, have, you'd, have, you'd have fun and it's, you know, it's um, Washington's a great town and yeah. it may, it, it, maybe next year if there's, I mean, maybe if there's a, a Capitals game, right? Or a, a bullets game. Yep. I, I've never been to a Capitals game. I'd love to go to a Capitals game. Um, yeah, I've been like outside the arena there, but that's it. Yeah, me too. So, you know, and the Washington Nationals is a great take as well. So, uh, two thumbs up for for the Bob Feller Award Foundation, uh, Valor, uh, after Valor Award Foundation. We are going to post a um, a video, a podcast of the event. So we, I, I interviewed John Gray at the end of the event. And we have all we have all sorts of um, audio that we cut. So we're gonna we're gonna have an audio uh, podcast of the event when it's up. I'll let everyone know if you guys want to check it out. It's really it's it's a really neat event. So I gave it two thumbs up. That was that was really fun. How's uh you 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 got um a big day today planned for you? Yeah, going out to the uh, Dallas Card Show. Uh, before I get into that though, I want to send a big thanks to uh, Clemente Lisi who uh, does the yep. show there with us. Uh, sent some Tim Hortons packs to me. So I got those in the mail yesterday. So if you're listening, thank you for those. It was pretty cool getting to open those up. Because Who'd you get? Oh, jeez. I, got... I don't have them sitting right here. But Clemente, I think sent me... Clemente sent me like a, um, I don't know, eight or nine cards as well. And he sent me two yeah. packs. And one of the cards he sent me was a Tim Horton card. The first pack I opened, my first card, Tim Horton. <laughs> ah, jeez, there you go. <laughs> I, know, I know there was a Crosby base in there at the very least in the very first pack. And it was like two base and one insert in each pack, which is kind of cool right. like set up on that. So I don't remember off the top of my head. I think one of the inserts was a Jonathan Taves one. So those are the two names that stick out most to me right there off the top. But, They're cool cards, aren't they? Yeah, it was really great getting to open those and check those out. Because, I mean, we don't have Tim Hortons down this far south, so I can never get the cards or anything. So big thanks to Clemente for uh, getting some of those same on to me. But, yeah, we've got the uh, Dallas Card Show going on today, this weekend, actually, Saturday and Sunday. This one is not in Dallas uh, itself, or even the north suburbs of Dallas. Like usually, this is actually over in kind of the mid cities area. It's, it says Fort Worth on the thing there, but it's really more like in kind of the Irving to Euless area. There, it's uh, right off, right next to the airport here in uh, DFW. So, uh, gonna be going out to that later today. Uh, Aaron's driving down for it as well. So, I'm sure we'll have some reviews for you on that for next week, and I'll let you know if I pick up anything. I've got a 
I was able to negotiate a little bit of money to spend their show, so I've got uh, got that going for me. So. Any say any guys signing? Um, I'm not sure if there are any signers. They typically don't at these ones, I don't think. But I haven't I haven't looked too deeply into it because usually they don't have anyone that I need, and usually it's outside my price range. Because yeah, I just I mean it's mostly local it's, people. It's and hard any local to spend. Th- got. It's hard to spend eighty ninety dollars on an autograph, isn't it? When when yeah. you know how many cards you can get for eighty ninety dollars, you know what right, I mean? Yeah. And I mean, the good thing is, like, their prices aren't quite that high on their autograph lineup, but still, it's when you've got like Wade Boggs there at, you know, 30 to 50 an item, it's like I can get them by mail for, for like, what, five, 10, whatever it is. So yeah. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't think I'm going to be uh, doing that one at all. But uh, yeah, I'm looking on their website right now and I'm not seeing anything about uh, autograph guests for this weekend's show, but. You got a list that you're going with? Or you're just kind of going and seeing what's out there? I'm just going to see what's there. I mean, I've got my want list I'll be carrying with me and all that. But, uh, yeah, no autograph signings at all for this one at all. So, uh, yeah. But the good thing was, though, it's only a $5 admission, which, I mean, the ones over in Allen are usually 10 bucks admission, plus you have to pay for parking. Yeah. And so, uh, fortunately, with this one, though, free parking and $5 admission. If you buy the admission in advance, it's only $1. So, Got my tickets for Aaron and me online. I'm like, yeah, we're we're not messing around with this five dollars stuff. So got those. Yeah, we'll go out there and see if I find anything. I've got a, like I said, I keep my uh, big book of want lists here with me all the time. <laughs> You're so organized. I'm jealous. Yeah, I actually really need to reprint this one. I mean, there's so much stuff I'm marking off on there. It's like I don't want to have to flip through a page that's you know like three quarters of it has you know lines through it there when I can just you know go and reprint one and rebind it and all that. So I'll probably do that for next year before I go and hit the road anywhere or something do you do you have do you make a list of like guys at ttm and, and that you're trying to pick up or you just kind of you kind of know i do have one in the back i put anybody from what sports was it let me see here did uh guys, yeah guys he has this big binder i'm i'm so jealous yeah. of him <laughs> so i did i went through and i found baseball players who debuted between 52 and 63 that ttm uh football players who debuted between 50 and 64 that ttm Basketball players who debuted from 57 to 69 who TTM, and hockey players who debuted from 50 to 67 who TTM. So wow. that way, if I find like a vintage table for cheap, which I mean, I have found a few there with like 25 cent vintage cards. I mean, they're not in the greatest shape at all, but still, it's, I mean, that's perfect for getting signed by mail as far as I'm concerned. So I go through, you know, any tables like that. And I'm like, yeah, we'll go ahead and, you know, pull guys, uh, pull cards of these guys and mail them out. You know, I love to pick up a lot, small lots of, um, you know, it's like 70 to 73 basketball and uh, football and, and baseball, just because I know that I, that's kind of my sweet spot of guys that I love to TTM. And those guys are what those guys are in their like late 60s, early 70s now. And there, yeah. there's a lot of guys in that, that set, especially I love the 1970 baseball set. There's so many guys that, that TTM in that set. Yeah, there are. Cool. Well, very. That that's great. You uh, you'll you'll have a great time at the show. Uh, and we'll we'll, we'll get a report on that on uh, our uh, our Wednesday show. So if yeah, make sure definitely. you listen to our Wednesday show. All right, guys. We have a great show for you this week. We have Greg Pool. Greg Pool is from Canscan Ministry. He's a uh, he is using baseball cards to do good. That's the best way to describe it. He is a uh, South, Southern uh, Illinois guy who has as a card shop. It's only open one day a week. And what he does is he sells the cards uh, in his card shop. They're all donated or they're his part of his own collection. And he takes that money and gives it back to the community. He gives it to teachers to buy uh, stuff for kids, you know, uh, supplies for kids. He gives it to uh, end up underprivileged kids. He takes in all sorts of cards uh, just for the ki- kids and gives them gives them away to the under, underprivileged kids. He also helps the elderly with uh, food and uh, other programs. He, uh, he He's doing good. He's he's using cards for good, and uh, it's really he's really interesting that Greg uh, was featured on the Card Life, and uh, our friend Brandon Versal hooked us up, and, and uh, Greg reached out, and I met, interviewed him the other day. So we'll have a great interview with Greg Poole coming up. We have also all our regular segments, right, Drew? Yes, we do. We've got Baker's Dozen, where we cover everything in the world of collecting here. Any news from the previous week? As you said, we've got Greg Poole coming up on the way and Clemente Lisi joining us to talk about some hockey. We'll have Making the Grade, where we cover all things from the world of grading, all the numbers from the grading companies and how they've done in the last week and what they've had go through their uh, their facilities. 
We got our stamp of approval. Jeff and I give our thumbs up to something, to anything from the previous week. You never know what it's going to be out of us. We've got uh, the Vern Rap Minute, where we cover any deaths in the world of sports, celebrity, music, movies, politics, anybody that you might consider TTM. If they have died, we will let you know about it. And, of course, the main reason why we all are here, our TTM returns. Guys, we love to hear from you. If you've emailed us and I haven't responded one way or the other, don't worry. I do. We get I get, we get all your emails. We address them one way or the other. Um, I know one, we got an email from one of our listeners. Uh, we're going to do a, uh, a Hall of Fame segment with Les Wolf this week. But we gave Les the week, the week off because we've got Clemente and we had a, a pretty full show. So we're going to do the Les Wolf Hall of Fame section uh, show next week with, with Les talking about potential Hall of Famers. So we haven't forgot about you. Uh, we love to hear from you. Um, if you have a suggestion for a guest, if you'd like to be on Collector's Corner, if you have a question for Drew and myself, please send us an email at ptmcast at yahoo.com. We love, that's our favorite part, right, Drew? We love to hear from our listeners because yeah. sometimes you, you got to, Realize Drew and I are sitting in our rooms and we don't know if you guys are listening. So we love we love to get feedback, right, Drew? Yeah, I mean we we see the download numbers, but it's like are 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 you listening along with downloading it? It's just like you you download and you stick it in there and you ever get to it. And I've done that before myself with podcasts. So yeah. All right, but thank you. I think that wraps up all our housekeeping. Let's get yep. right into Baker's Dozen. Baker's Dozen, sponsored by SportsCollectorsDaily.com. Smart collectors turn to Sports Collectors Daily to stay up to date. From new releases to incredible collections hitting the auction block, news from inside the business of sports collectibles, and much more, Sports Collectors Daily has it, all with no subscription cost. SC Daily also delivers a live look at the most watched sports card auctions on eBay for every sport. Sign up to get the headlines in your email for free or just visit the website whenever you like. With 16,000 stories in the archive going back 16 years, there is always plenty to read at SportsCollectorsDaily.com. Baker's Dozen is a <coughs> new summary of what's been going on in the uh, hobby. Lots of stuff going on this week. Just want to remind everyone about our $10 coupon from Collects. If you uh, just download the Collects app, which is awesome. You're going to use the Collects app in, in Dallas at the show? I will have it up and running with me, yes. It's very cool. You can scan cards, uh, find out the value of them, uh, manage your collection, do all sorts of stuff. There's also a marketplace where you can buy cards and uh Collects will give you $10 just for signing up. All you have to do is uh, download the app, get your Collects username, send it to us, and uh, we will send that over to Collects and email it to us at ptmcast at yahoo.com. And Collects will send you a uh, $10 coupon. I just got my Joey Votto rookie card, Drew. One of the cards nice. I got at, at uh, for my my Collects. I, I finally use all my $10. So, um, and I actually have, a, I have $5 for my Matt Strom, uh, update. I got Matt, I got, a, I got that coming as well. So, uh, make sure you, you get t your $10 from collects collects is a great app and a great sponsor. Thank you from our friends at collects. We've got i I've got to make a video on this, I think for this week as well. So I did one last year, but we're bringing back the give a card, get a card deal that we did last year around Christmas. What you'll do is uh, Jeff's going to have his uh, address up on our website at ttmcast.com. And what you're going to do is, if you want to get in on this, send two autographed cards plus a self-addressed stamped envelope out to Jeff there. He's going to get all of this organized. And what you're going to do is for every two cards that you send, you're going to end up one, getting one of those cards donated to Singers and Soldiers. And one of those cards is going to then come back to, or come, you're going to get somebody else's card that comes back to you in that self-addressed stamped envelope. So get in on that. Uh, make sure if you want, you can send multiple cards if you want. If you want to send, you know, eight cards out there and get four of them back, send four self address stamped envelopes along with that. So just make sure it's going to be one card per envelope. So uh, work within those boundaries there. But hey, get some different stuff for your collection and help out a great cause. It's all going to benefit signatures for soldiers. So uh, yeah, go and uh, go and get in on that. TTMcast.com. You'll find a link on there that'll get to the address. Yeah, I promise. I was going to do the link this week. I got, I was traveling, so I didn't get the link done, but I will do it. Uh, I promise I'm going to do it this weekend. The link will be up, and um, it's a great way to connect with other collectors. Uh, you know, get rid of some of your doubles. I'm sure everyone has doubles of cards that they 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 may or may not want. And um, the best I try to match up the quality of card that you send me 
to the quality card that you get. So if you send me a Wade Boggs to send out to another collector, I'll try to make sure that you get an Andre Dawson or a Fergie Jenkins or or, or, or another Hall of Famer. And uh, you know, if you if you send an older ba older baseball card, a vintage baseball card, I try to make sure that you get a vintage baseball card back. If you send hockey cards, I try to make sure you get a hockey card back. Um, and I, you know, I. A lot, I know you a lot of the, our regular listeners. If there's a favorite team, if like if Dave Snyder sends me something, well, guess what? He's he's getting a Buffalo Sabre, right? Drew, if Drew sends me something, he's going to get a, a Cleveland Brown. So there's all all sorts of guys out there that, that I know kind of know who they like. We try to match up as best we can uh, so that you get a card that that um, you know you you can add to your collection. Um, I've got three or four cards sitting. Uh, I, I pulled aside already. So uh, we'll we'll have fun. It, it's, it's a fun time. Um, we're going to run this through the end of the year, right? Through through, we'll run it through the end of the year. Um, I'll, I usually hold the cards till I don't know second second or third week in December, so that you can we you know, we get a lot of a lot of different cards in, and then we'll 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 fill it we'll fill it out by the end of the year. So stick, yeah, just do give a card, get a card, check it out at ttmcast.com. All right, buddy. Hey, this is a really fun one because um, it, it kind of hits home with me. My daughter's birthday is this uh, is today. She's 24. Well, one of our great listeners, Sam Kessler, uh, ha is celebrating the birth of his daughter, Sophie. And so it's kind of, uh, you know, we got uh, a girl, a little girl who's now, I think, two or three years old. Right. And, and my and mine is 24. And Drew, it goes fast. Sam, it goes fast. Well, you're going to blink and she's going to be in uh, graduating high school and then you're going to be blinking. And she's graduating college. It, 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 I can't explain it, Sam. It, it's, it, it goes fast. So enjoy it. Congratulations to you and your wife. And, uh, I, I know you're, you, you're, uh, you, you're adding, adding to your family, growing family. So we're very happy and, uh, happy that you're, you're, uh, and glad for you for your birth of your daughter, Sophie. I've got some legal news here as well. Just announced this week, Panini and WWE have settled their licensing dispute outside of the courts. The uh, case has been dismissed. Uh, no details on the settlement, though, just yet. So not sure if uh, Panini is going to be continuing with WWE or not, but at the very least, that is one piece of uh, legal minutiae that Panini is involved in that has been settled finally. So... Now we just have to get the stuff with Fanatics and with the NFLPA all figured out now, but that's a big one off the table, and uh, yeah, Paul Lesko mentioned it on his Twitter feed. He said, yeah, I don't have any info on how they came to the settlement, what the settlement is, anything like that, so uh, no news there, but I'm sure as soon as we have whatever that news is, wherever the WWE card license is going to or staying or anything like that, we will let you know. Yeah, I'm going to say that's a win for Panini. I would think so. I mean, Panini... Everything was on Panini's side that I saw in any legal uh, wrangling up to this point. So I'm sure that either A, they got a great deal on either A, the WWE is sticking with them, or B, they got a a great buyout. It's one or the other thing. Cause yeah, I mean, the way I, were looking, it was not looking good for WWE. So I'm sure they were just like, we're just going to run off their tail between our legs. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not a legal expert, but um, just as a collector, it seemed like almost a fr frivolous lawsuit by WWE. Like, you know they were they were they were being uh, immature about the whole thing. Like, uh, oh, I'm gonna I'm I'm fine. I'm gonna I'm I'm taking my ball and run going home with it. I don't. So, something happened that they didn't like, and they were just like, "Well, screw you." And I think you know we don't know we don't know the whole uh, what the sediment was, but um, I don't see Panini bowing and, and giving giving anything to them. And uh, you know it's just saving court costs, right? Because yeah. How much money? How much money would WWE and Panini have to spend on this this um, lawsuit that didn't have much ground to stand on? Quite a bit. I'm sure WWE realized that real quickly. It's like, look, we're probably not going to get out of this. Let's talk settlement and see what we can find for common ground out there. And also, I think considering how much of the WWE and NFLPA stuff was overlapping and were used in each other's suits, this may lead to a settlement on the NFLPA deal as well. I would bet. Right, and I think WWE is going to come in ahead of this anyway because they're going to make money off the licensing. But right, yeah. I mean, they, yeah, I mean, they, this, either way, they're making a killing on this because I mean, they said that they were made that they made more. I think they said they tripled their card, their money off of card sales in just that first year alone with Panini. So if they stay with Panini, it's going to be a big win for them. If they move elsewhere, it's going to be a win for them. So I'm sure. 
Panini wants to make sure they get their money because, you know, hey, look, this is a big profit maker for them as well. But at the same time, hey, WWE, if you don't want out, fine, you can go elsewhere. Just make sure that you get us what you owe us to get out of this. So I'm sure they were able to strike a pretty decent uh, common ground on that, if I had to take a guess. Yeah, and, I, and you know, Panini produces a, a really nice product for WWE. I, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I can't, I, I, I'm amazed how popular WWE cards are. And, I, you know, I think it's not in our, our demographics, right, Drew? You know, 30 years ago, if we were if we were 18 years old, 15 years old, or 21 years old, we'd have been really into the WWE. But, you know, it's WWE, Drew. <laughs> it is yeah, what it I, is. I, I, yeah, I've never been into pro wrestling at all at any time. It just does not appeal to me at all. But that WWE Prism set, people were raving about that yeah. when it came out. I mean, it was selling like crazy. People loved it. And so... Yeah, like I said, I mean, this is WWE is going to have a decent uh, money maker on cards either way, whether they stay with Panini, whether they go to Fanatics, whichever one it is. People are finally kind of getting into wrestling cards on a decent level they never were at before. So that's helped out a lot, and yeah, it's it's a it's a money maker out there for them for sure. Yeah, and I'm glad that, I'm glad it's settled, and you know, I'm sure we'll we'll see in the coming weeks the, uh, what the results were, and and maybe part maybe part of the reason why that they. Settled it, and maybe, and, and I'm just guessing on this is that WWE said, "Well, we'll settle, but you get it. You got to keep it quiet because we don't want to look bad." Right, and I mean, a lot of settlements like that are done under lock and key, basically. And the only time you might see anything with it is, like I said, if it gets brought up in the NFLPA suit. If that, yep. uh, and cause, I mean, that's how we got a lot of info on the NFLPA suit was through the WWE suit, and so now it might go back the other way now. And, kind of use those two together and against each other and with each other to try to get the best settlement. We are getting an education on business, aren't we, Drew? <laughs> yeah, big time. Yeah. <laughs> Unwanted, but we're getting an education on business. All right, bud. We have a lot of uh, new releases to let everyone know about that, that uh, came out this week. We have the 2022-23 Panini National Treasures Basketball. It's one pack of 10 cards. This is a high-end product. It's $3,250 for a box uh, you get one pack of ten cards. They're they're beautiful cards. You know, a lot of autographs and uh, relics in it. 2022-23 Panini National Treasure Basketball is now out. Got some Onyx Vintage Extended Series Baseball is out right now. Four cards per pack. One pack that has two autographs in it. There, so you get some uh, nice stuff coming in there. Fifty dollars only the price tag on that one. Yeah, the Onyx is nice. It's in a, it's a nice nice release. Um, Drew, this came out um, the other day, and this is a 2023 Topps Chrome Update Baseball. You get 24 packs, four cards per uh, pack. That's what they tell you. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a little problem with, with Topps Quality Control on this one on my end. You get one autograph uh, for $140. This is 2023 Topps Chrome Update Baseball. Drew, we have all sorts of ones coming out. I can't wait till the Heritage High Number comes out. The there's a lot of a lot of one a lot of things that I'm waiting on. It's kind of weird that this really delayed releases, don't you think? Yeah, it definitely is. I'm I'm waiting for my uh, heritage miners there to see you know, Miner who I'll be set, able to get yeah. next year, but yeah, I haven't uh, haven't seen anything with that just yet. So, uh, we got some uh, UFC coming out from Panini 2023 Donruss Optic UFC set. You're gonna see 20 packs per box, four cards per pack. That's 80 cards per box if you're scoring at home. One autograph will come out of that box as well. $150 is your price tag. All right. This one confuses me and confounds me, but I'm, well, we're going we're gonna to talk about it anyway. The 2023 Panini Origins Football International Blaster Boxes. Six packs, six cards per pack. Uh, there's 14 rookies, two parallels, and five inserts. They're going for about $85. Drew, did we figure out what the international means of these Panini Origin football? No, I'm actually pulling it up right now on uh, this, what is this, Steel City Collectibles to see if they have anything. It mentions the, uh, I found the 2022 box up on uh, Steel City there. and Of international? Yeah, and I don't see, like, what makes it international. I don't exactly. know. <laughs> I was trying to look through here. It's like, yeah, I guess, I mean, maybe these blasters are being sold. I, I'm thinking it's like I said last week there. I think it might be. Uh, the ones they're selling in, in, in Europe and. Yeah, in Europe and in China and wherever and stuff, but yeah, I don't see. Uh, yeah, I'm. All right, I, well, they're they're out, guys. Out. Panini Origins Football. They are nice cards. Uh, the international version blaster boxes are out. 
You can get those for about $85. Yep. All right, Drew, we have some show news to report. Yes, we do. We've got the Philly show coming up. It's about two weeks away, December 1st through the 3rd, and they have a nice list of autographed guests will be out there. Typically very uh, Philadelphia-centric there, and uh, no difference here, or no difference on this one. Got a Bill Berge is going to be out there, former Eagles linebacker. Got Jamie Moyer, former Phillies pitcher. Mike Quick, former Eagles wide receiver. A trio of Eagles quarterbacks that will be out there. Randall Cunningham, Ron Jaworski, and Donovan McNabb all signing out there. No Bobby Hoying signing. I'm still mad about that. <laughs> Got to get him out there. Uh, Cole Hamill is going to be there, former Phillies pitcher, through a playoff or was it even a World Series no-hitter, I believe. One of, yeah, one of those. He was awesome. He was, he he was. was really good. Yeah, Phillies, Rangers, maybe a couple other teams in there. Had at least one no-hitter in his turn. Actually, now that I think of it, I think it was just regular season on that. But either way, good pitcher. Go and get him if you don't have him yet. Uh, Dennis Rodman is going to be there. Did not play for the 76ers, but played for just about everybody else, it seemed like. Burt Warner, the uh, former running back of the uh, Se- Seattle Seahawks, is going to be out there. We'll have Paul Molitor as a guest and Gary Payton as well, baseball and basketball Hall of Famers, respectively. Once again, Philly show, December 1st through the 3rd. Kurt, Wa- Kurt Warner, every time I see his card, I pull it because like, oh, I'm going to send it to him to TTM. He doesn't sign TTM. He's one of those, yeah. you know, there's some guys that should be, should be a TTM, should be TTMing. Kurt Warner. Yeah, there's one. ones that like you'd swear you've seen them on success, uh, on success posts there. It's like, no, he doesn't. He, this guy last signed in 2006. What? Okay, fine. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that happens to me all the time. He's, he's that one guy like, oh, that's a good card. I'd love to get that signed. Yeah. Damn, he doesn't sign TTM. So, but you get you can get him at the Philly show. All right. Well, that wraps up Baker's dozen, guys. Uh, we're gonna go right into Collector's Corners next. And now it's time for Collector's Corner. Let's hear from our collector this week. This segment is sponsored by Collects, the free app for scanning, pricing, tracking, and cataloging your cards. Get your first $5 on the app automatically by scanning a card, adding it to your collection, and listing it for sale today. So, Drew, this week I had the uh, privilege, and I say it is true privilege, uh, to talk to Greg Poole. Greg Poole is from a, uh, a thing called Cans Cams Ministry, and what he uh, Greg does is he uses baseball cards for good. He has a is a uh, his own show shop. I'm I'm sorry in uh, Southern Illinois, and he opens it one day a week. And they have also the kids in the neighborhood uh, sell their cards and stuff, and he sells his cards. And all the money is going to help uh, different uh, organizations and different uh, things that in his community. He has a thing for um, Meals on Wheels. He helps fund uh, fun for elderly. He helps gives he has all sorts of stuff supplies for teachers to help teachers uh, give them supplies for kids and i don't know drew you you don't have any uh, kids in school or any kids right now but um it's different than when you and i were in school if you uh, know any teachers they do they supply a lot of the stuff that uh, comes out of their their pocket especially if they're in in uh you know downtrodden communities we have uh one of paula's friends is a teacher in lowell which you know drew you know lowell Lowell's not not the most affluent community and she's always looking for pens paper uh winter jackets just because these kids are don't have anything uh so the, you know the uh, greg's works with base using baseball cards to earn money to help his community which is really outstanding so please enjoy my interview with greg Poole. his uh um Ministry is called Cans Can Ministry, and if you ha- you can check them out online, and they're always looking for donations in, in in terms of cards and supplies and stuff. So please enjoy my interview with Greg Poole. All right, guys, we have a very special guest today. His name is Greg Poole. He runs Cans Can ministries it says in a south southern illinois ministry focusing on improving the lives of those in southern illinois they use sports cards and memorabilia to fund their social projects a hundred percent of the money owned go uh, earned goes into uh the projects and it helps uh local assisted living centers classrooms students and basically any anyone that needs help right greg yeah yeah any human being <laughs> So I know you guys, you started this in 2019 and, uh, has it been take, has it taken a while to gain some traction? Yeah. So unofficially, um, this is our 23rd year of existence. So 
Um, <clears throat> we opened the shop in 2019. Um, initially, it was difficult to get some traction because um, literally the month that we signed our lease to move into our space, um, COVID happened, or I guess COVID was happening. And so... <laughs> um, kind of throw a wrench at everything, day. right? Yeah, you know, when you sign a lease on the like the 16th of March and like the 19th, the governor says nobody can do anything for, you know, an, an, an extended period of time, um, kind of throws a wrench in things and makes it kind of slow to get going. Um, but yeah, so as far as what we've, um, you know, the, 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 the nonprofit side of it, uh, this is our, like I said, this is our 23rd year. Um, before we opened the shop full time, we did shows, we did online sales, things like that. So uh, yeah, so uh, this will be our fourth year here, uh, 23rd year of existence in, in total. Uh, are, have you been a collector for a while? And, and why did you um, decide to use cards and sports memorabilia to, um, you know, to fund the, the, the ministry? Yeah, so lifetime collector. Um, so I'm unfortunately slash fortunately in the age demographic that uh, grew up in the junk wax era. So uh, <laughs> uh, cut my teeth on, you know, the 88 Donruss, 89 Tops, things like that. So um, my childhood collection uh, was not going to pay for the Ferrari that I thought it was going to when I was growing up. Uh, it's not going to pay for the dream house that my dad thought when he was making me leave the 89 Tops sets in the in the wrappers. <laughs> um, so yeah, so li lifetime collector. Um so <clears throat> honestly, uh, so growing up cards and collecting and really sports in general was kind of my escape. Um, grew up with a lot of trauma, a lot of different things going on. And so really cards and like I said, sports in general kind of provided that um, awareness for me, kind of a way to clear my head, kind of something to do to just take my mind off of what was going on. Uh, I was lucky, you know, you grow up in the junk wax era, but every town at that point had its own card shop. I was lucky that we had a wonderful card shop uh, down the road, uh, Fielder's Choice, which I still think is one of the best names I've ever heard for a card shop, um, but just allowed me to spend, you know, an inordinate amount of time going through singles boxes, um, things like that, spending time there, just <clears throat> just being away from things. And so growing up, uh, like I said, collecting was really my escape. Um, friends, I had a lot of cousins growing up, so it was really like grab your binders, grab your boxes on a Friday night. Uh, you meet up with your buddies and hope they don't rip you off too bad. And, and then maybe you can, you know, get one in on them every once in a while. Um, so when I was 16, um, really got to the point in my life where suicide became an option, um, attempted suicide. Um, and one of the things that I did before that, uh, growing up in high school, I was a member of a Meals on Wheels program <clears throat> that we did through our school. And so what the last thing that I think I was going not think last thing that I was going to do was I, I went and grabbed a bunch of boxes, um, sold what I could, uh, bought some food for the people on our route, uh, drove around, delivered it, said my goodbyes. And then um, obviously I didn't succeed in what I attempted to do. So I got back in my truck and just kind of looked down at what I had left and thought, well, you know, I'm here for something. And so that was unofficially the start. Um, I was 16 at the time. Unfortunately, I guess I can say I'm 39 now. So the, the years have flown by pretty fast. Yeah. 40's uh, so a started... tough one. 40 is a tough one, my friend. <laughs> it's it's coming fast. Uh the other day I got out of bed and my son goes, Why does it sound like that when you get up in the morning? And I said, Just <laughs> wait, son. <laughs> it only gets worse. Um, so yeah, so um we started out. I think our first official project was we bought some tires for a uh, senior citizen in town. Uh, who needed uh, some tires. Uh, we moved into schools, moved into assisted living facilities. And really since then, we've just kind of exploded. Um, we, we live in a pretty impoverished area of Illinois. I think we have the second or the third highest unemployment rate. Um, our poverty rate in our schools is somewhere in the high 70s. <clears throat> um, so there's a lot of need in the area. And so really the hobby has allowed me to not really have to say no to anybody that comes to us uh, for help. So we, like I said, we started in schools. Um, we're somewhere in the neighborhood of like 400 classrooms we've been in. Our coverage area is about 120 miles north to south. We go river to river in Illinois. Um, we do assisted living facilities. We've got a lot of low income senior citizens in town. 
Uh, we do a meal route um, where we serve most of the people on our meal route live, still live at home, but have some form of Alzheimer's disease. And so we give them a, a meal twice a week. We check up on them. Um, so really, like I said, that that childhood hobby like that provided an escape for me is now allowing me to provide for those in need in our area. Yeah. Some of the other things that I saw that you guys uh, programs you have, you have a bicycle giveaway, which is great. You give. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So kids. absolutely. So uh, one of the things that, you know, when you're in as many schools and in as many classrooms, uh, it's allowed us to kind of uh, come up with a great rapport and a great relationship with teachers. And so um, <clears throat> they'll reach out to us and they'll say, hey, you know, Tommy needs a bike. Uh, either he just needs it for transportation. Uh, he's reached some sort of academic or emotional milestone and we just want to give him a surprise. And so, yeah, we do a bike giveaway um, in March, April, uh, every school year. And one of the things that we like to do, well, we like to do with everything, but even with the bikes is we want to handle everybody with dignity. And so one of the cool things I think we do is um, we don't ever just say like, hey, here's your bike. Um, we the teacher will will put a big jar of well, really it's just paper and they'll pick it out in front of the class and they'll say, hey, Tommy, want a bike? So, yeah. Instead of so instead of just saying, like, here's the bike that you need because you're low income or because, you know, whatever, you know, we want to say you want it. We want to give them something to, to kind of cherish and take care of. That's awesome. Giving a smile to a kid, a kid like that. That's really great. You also do a Christmas wish list, which is really fantastic. <clears throat> yeah. So we are in full swing on the Christmas wish list. And so what we so. have found here in, in yeah, it, with our wish list, um, with our senior citizens in town. So really in our area, like in the 60s, 70s, uh, we were a coal mining area. And so there was a big boom. And so what has happened now is those that have grown up in that time frame, they don't want to leave. And so they're still here in the area, but their kids are long gone. And so what we found is there's a lot of seniors that don't have anything for the holidays, whether their their kids are gone, they're estranged from their families. And so uh, we go to local assisted living facilities and we pass out a Christmas wish list and we let them write down anything that they want. Uh, we do the same thing with foster kiddos, um, with low income kids. We just let them put whatever they want. Um, <clears throat> those those lists range from... <laughs> you know, uh, the, the 12 pack of diet Coke to a big screen TV. We don't, we don't discriminate. We don't ask questions. We just go out and we, we buy it for them and we wrap it. We, we do a little Christmas party for them. And, uh, yeah, so we do Christmas for them. And also you've turned, uh, kids into, onto collecting in terms of kids that probably wouldn't have had a, uh, access to cards or have the money to, to buy cards. People donate a lot of cards and you've, you've gotten a lot of cards into kids' hands. Yeah, so we're somewhere, we're over 4 million in terms of total cards donated. Um, I've officially lost count. Um, so we just guesstimate now by monster boxes. Um, but yeah, so same thing um, in our area. Uh, sports are big, but, you know, in, in a lower income area, the, the hobby is tends to price kids out of it. And um, so we... I mean, it's not like when you and I were kids and you could buy a pack of cards for 15 cents or 20 cents or a quarter, right? Right. Yeah. So, you know what? I'll tell you what, the craziest thing. And again, the more I guess that you age, the more that you think back to when you were kids and, you know, you always thought you'd never be that guy that said, well, when I was young. Um, but I can remember at, at the card shop when 93 Finest came out and it was ten dollars a pack and I almost fell over dead. <laughs> like I thought there is no way I would ever spend ten dollars on a pack of cards. But yeah. So um so yeah, so what we do is we come up with uh, grab bags. Um, we do a lot of giveaways in schools. Um, we do a lot of giveaways in, like I said, with foster kids. We, we hand them out to sheriff's departments. Um, we're somewhere in the four million range. Uh, through our website, we have something called Jack's Magic Mailbox where kids can write in and say like, hey, here's my favorite player uh, team and we'll, we'll pack it up and we'll send it to them. And so, yeah, so we wanna build that hobby in, in the younger um demographic just because i knew what it meant to me um and not just what it meant to me but i mean it promotes so many different things it's it's it promotes healthy social activity i mean we've got teachers that use it for math we yeah, we for do math, i mean it's for just reading so, right all that yeah and so we do that with cards and we do it a little bit with comic books too and it just provides these kids with something that's just not a book and not that there's anything wrong with reading a book but it gives kids something they can relate to and they, you know, they see the stats, they see, you know, I'm looking at a box here, they see Albert Pujols play and then to further their, 
you know, to their reading or to their math. I mean, we've got um, teachers that will use it, you know, they'll, they'll um, do math with ERA and slugging percentage and things like that. So yeah, we want to get that into the hands of the kids. And like I said, um, a lot of kids in our area, and I think a lot of kids in general tend to just be priced out of that. And so what, like I said, what we do is we, we try to get those hand, you know, get them cards into the hands of kids. And I think, you know, we do get donations. We're still somewhere like 85, 90% of what we sell and give away comes from my own personal collection. Um, we always do uh, take donations. We had somebody come in here yesterday uh, that donated six or seven tubs of cards. Now it was 87, 88, 89 tops. Um, which, you know, I don't think that a kid's going to get rich again on, but again, yeah. it gives us something that we can build those packs with, um, and to get to the hands of kids. Do you have a fun story or a night, uh, story in terms of, um, you know, some kid that maybe was going down the wrong path and got, you know, got cards and, and kind of turned them around, uh, it turned his life around at all. Yeah. So it, yeah, we have a few, I mean, there's kids now that we have kind of gotten involved into the hobby. Um, that we take with us to shows now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got two little entrepreneurs that that we let set up in front of our shop when we're open. Um, they don't get rich, but they do they do earn money. Um, they do we do require uh, them to give a percentage of that back. And so um, one of the kiddos um, that he, he actually adopted two of the kids that we picked up for Christmas this year, and so nice. yeah, so just just trying like I said, just trying to train that next generation. Uh, to, for empathy, you know, to give them empathy and to realize, you know, kind of what's going on. But yeah, so we've got a couple kids that hang out in front of the shop um, when we're open and they've got a little card card table set up and they, they sell. Um, you know, it just like I said, it was it, it was just something that meant so much to me. And it's so fun to see that it's rewarding to see that kind of in the next generation. Now, I know you've gotten a lot of junk wax people donating, but you've had some cool stuff people brought in, cards from the 50s and even some uh, T206 cards, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, some of the higher end stuff that we've sold, uh, we had a, uh, I bought a lot at an estate auction uh, that had the T205 gold border, Christy Mathewson. Um, we bought a bag uh, of cards at an estate auction several years ago uh, that had a 33 Ruth in it. Um, wow. It smelled and it had a kid's name written on the back of it. Um, <laughs> but, but it's still a Ruth. It's still a Ruth. Um, and it was one of those that I, I nearly threw the bag away. I had purchased it um, because there were some Jerry Sloan and Doug Collins cards in there. And so they're local. The Doug's from our hometown. Uh, Jerry's from uh, 20 minutes away. So it was just some junk in there. And I thought, oh, that'd be neat to just put up in the shop. And so I got to the end. I'm like, I am so tired of digging through coffee stained cards and was dumping out the bag and this Ruth fell out. And I thought, holy cow, like I, I very, very nearly pitched a, a Ruth. And so sent it off to Beckett. It was authentic. I mean, it graded a one, I, but it was real. We sold it. Um, you know, the Matthewson, we, we bought some iPads for some nonverbal kids. We were able to get them some software uh, that allowed them to speak. Um, the Ruth we sold. Uh, paid for some of our rent, paid for our cases in here. So yeah, 100% of what we sell uh, goes right back in. I'm not paid to do this. Uh, my daughter thinks that she's paid to do this, but she works, <laughs> <laughs> she works for Skittles. My son works for beef jerky. Um, but yeah, so 100% of what we sell, it's not profit. It's not, there's no margins. It's 100% of everything goes back into those programs. Have you sent any cards out to get signed to get uh, for you no know, TTM autographs? Yeah, or, so we do, and and that is that is a personal um, thing I like to do. So yeah, so we definitely do. And so when you get large quantities of the junk wax, uh, we found that's really the best way to kind of make uh, to upsell those. Yeah, um, to give it so a little yeah, more value, right? Yeah, yeah, it gives them more value. And honestly, we've been blessed in the fact that most of the people that, that donate those large quantities, like the, the stuff that came in yesterday, um, they were building sets that she her, it was a it was a uh, a woman whose son had passed, but he he was he he spent his youth building sets. And so what was good with that is he had them all in numerical order and not just numerical order, but the doubles were in numerical order. Oh, nice. And so yeah, so you know. The 87 tops, there was 15 Todd Warrells right there, just bang, bang, bang. I didn't really have to do any work. So yeah, 
Yeah. And honestly, um, it, it is, that's a lot of fun for me. So it, it's one of those things that, like I said, anything that we do here, I, it's, it's a hobby and it allows me, it's fun, but I love that, that through the mail stuff. Um, and we have so much success with, you know, mid seventies uh, to eighties baseball players are always so, so generous. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so we definitely do that. And, you know, it turns a, a car that we probably couldn't sell for a quarter into something that we could sell for three to five dollars uh, for the cost of a stamp. And most of the time when we send um, things through the mail, I do include a letter that says we are going to sell it. I know some players um, are, are not super fond of that. So we always want to make sure we're up front. We always put a card in there, uh, our little business card. And so a lot of the times there we'll send three and we'll get six or seven bags. So it's really cool. That's, that's very cool. What do you, what do you see? Um, what's your goals? What is, what is your desire for the ministry? What would you like to see? How would you like to see the ministry grow? And, and what, you know, what are the things that you need to uh, help you get to that goal? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> we, we, we grow every day, whether we want to or not. Um, so one of the things that we need to do as, as a, as a nonprofit is, just to get our name out there in the card world, um, we do go to the national. I mean, I don't have a table or anything, but I do go out and I, you know, just just word of mouth, try to get it out there. Um, we have to grow the shop portion of it to keep up with the needs of our community. And like I said, somewhere in the range of 90 percent is out of pocket that I, I pay for the cards in here. And so Greg, are you selling uh, new releases as well as so we do stuff? we do carry a little bit of everything so we have singles and autographs we do carry what we can in terms of hobby boxes um sometimes the margins on the new stuff aren't that great right there's and nothing so, there yeah, there's nothing there so we do we do keep some just because there's not there's nobody around us that exists like us and so we do kind of try to keep some things in here just to keep kids in the area somewhere to go. Um, yeah, the margins sometimes aren't there. So it's harder to justify um, that being, you know, what we carry. So we do carry those things. Um, but, you know, just what we'd like to see is just just to partner up with people. I mean, I know that there are collectors, you know, and I, I go on Twitter and I see people that are like, hey, if it's not worth three or four or five dollars, I throw it in the trash. And it's like, oh, no, no, please, no, please no, don't, don't do that. that. Please don't. Please don't. You know, we'll take anything if we don't put it in the shop and we don't raise money with it. Like I said, we give it to kids. Um, so really, like one of the cool things that, you know, some of the publicity we've gotten is just people reaching out saying, hey, I have this. I had no idea what to do with it. Um, but just those like I said, just those partnerships, just that, that hobby, I don't want to say recognition because we don't do anything for recognition, but just to be a place or to be an established place that if you have something that you don't know what to do with, we'll take it and we'll do good with it. And so, yeah, just to, just to get out there and just to get out there maybe with some companies and, you know, if you need a write-off, we're, we're a 501 C3 uh, nonprofit. We'll give you a write-off. I mean, if that's <laughs> what you need, we'll give it to you. Um, Greg, let's yeah, let people know how they can donate if they want what you guys are yeah, looking so, for um, and how they can donate yeah so on our website we have a donate tab uh canscanbenton.org uh, we have a canscanbenton.org guys yeah, canscanbenton.org can yep we're on twitter we're on facebook um but we do have a donate tab where it gives the address that you can send things to we do like i said the uh the tax exempt sheet or the tax sheets on there you can fill that out uh, but yeah, so just, just that, like I said, just being an established place. Um, what are yeah. you looking for for donations, Greg? Anything we leave no meat on the bones. So, you know, one of the things that my wife says when I bring things home, um, which sometimes she's not overly fond of, but, um, she says, please no 91 Fleer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How about 91 Donruss? Those red, the red 91 ones. Donruss. I don't have a ton of 91 Donruss. The funny thing is, I, I guess that 91 Fleer had to have been the greatest selling set of all time because um, every donation that we get always contains at least one box of 91 Fleer. And my wife knows nothing about baseball cards and very little about sports, but she says, if I see one more box that comes home with that yellow border, I'm going to scream. <laughs> So, um, 
Yeah. So really anything, like I said, it, it, it doesn't matter because, um, you know, like I said, if it's singles, it will, we'll find kids, you know, we get lists every day that says, you know, Hey, uh, you know, I'm going into a foster situation. I love Albert Poole. So I love, I'm mean, like I said, I'm just looking at a box and we, we try to carry everything like uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. I got a stack of Ryan Fitzpatrick's a kid wanted that I'm looking at right now. We'll, we'll, we'll go somewhere good with that condition. Doesn't necessarily matter either. Uh, because one of the things that we've just started, uh, especially with older stuff that's rough, is in those assisted living facilities, they it's we, we call it a talk box. And so we will put together a box of 50s or 60s or 70s tops. We'll give it to these people and it's a conversation starter. So they'll keep it in like the common areas of these assisted living facilities. These guys will just go down there and grab a box. And then before you know it, they're reminiscing about seeing Tim McCarver play in 1971. Yeah. So it, it, those things, like I said, condition doesn't matter. It, it, as long as it's there, it provides a memory for those people. Um, like I said, if it's new stuff, it doesn't matter because kids are going to take it. Um, you know, and like I said, if it's stuff we can put in the shop, we'll, we'll sell it and um, we'll do good with it. One of the things that I really love that you guys are doing, you have a resource center for teachers. So if teachers need uh stuff for their class uh, or their students, they can come in and, and get, uh, you know, whatever, paper, pens. Uh, you know, I know my um, wife's friend is a teacher here in Massachusetts, and we donate winter coats because they're in a print of its area, and the kids don't have winter coats. So I think that's, it's really uh, a neat thing that you guys are doing. Yeah. So in the back part of our shop, uh, we have three rooms now um that it's we call it the resource center my, my daughter made me rename it because we used to call it the teacher resource center but we invite um social workers and teachers especially to come in and really they just take whatever they need off the shelf and so it's a full it's a full service store uh we carry everything like you said from backpacks to to winter coats um sock caps are a big one now the weather here in Southern Illinois could be 71 week and 30 the next. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, we're in Boston, so I we, we get the same weather. Yeah, so last week it was 35, today it's 72. Um, but so yeah, so we carry everything and we really don't require those teachers to do anything other than they come in, they write their name down in the district that they're from and they bring their own bag and whether they need, like I said, whether they need coats, pencils, um, uh, library books are a big one. So um, yeah, they just come in and take what they need. And, and like I said, the shop pays for all of that. Um, everything that we do, whether it be food, teachers, anything, it's all free. Uh, like I said, the shop allows us to not charge. We never charge anybody for anything that we do. Um, but yeah, so we do teachers, um, social workers come back, we carry diapers and bedding. Um, and then some things that we've just learned that we need. So we carry like fire extinguishers. There's things that people need uh, to become foster certified. And so we carry fire extinguishers and carbon monoxide detectors. And so, yeah, they just come in and they say, I'm Ted, I'm from X school. And we say, go on back and, and take what you need. And they come out and sometimes they grab a pack of cards on the way out. Sometimes they don't, but it doesn't matter <laughs> to us, you know, whatever they buy, that's fine, but we don't require them to do anything. It's all free. Guys, we're speaking with Greg Poole. Greg is from Can, Can, Cans Can Benton.org. It's Cans Can Ministries. Go to Cans Can Benton. I'm going to get it right, Greg. That's okay. Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can also follow him on Twitter. They're at Cans Can Ministries. Um, if you want to email Greg, it's Cans Can Ministries at gmail.com. Um, they are in Southern Illinois. If you have a bunch of extra cards you want to unload, you guys, uh, Greg, we had one of um, these two young kids in Southern Florida. They lost their entire collection to the um, the hurricane, and we we raised over. We sent them over three hundred pound three hundred pounds of cards to get to get them to build their yeah, awesome. their uh, collection up. So, guys, help out help out Greg and his his uh, group. You can just you know they'll, they'll they're looking for cards. They're looking for anything anything that they can uh, use to sell to to earn money to help out. Uh, assisted living uh, centers, classrooms, and students. It's a really uh, great organization. You can check out Greg. They uh, they did a uh, feature on Greg uh, on The Cards Life. You can check that out. Which episode was it, Greg? Do you, know, do you remember off the top of your head? Uh, I think we were on in July. In July, okay. We were on the Illinois episode. Yeah, yeah, it was really funny. Brandon said, uh, you know, he, he made that schedule, and he said, hey, um, uh, Matt's up in Chicago. He's, you know, he's at Wrigley. 
Um, and we're just going to drive down and we'll, we'll hit you up after that. And I said, well, what time, what time? He said, well, you know, uh, they're, they're playing in the evening. We'll be down sometime that night. And I said, Brandon, man, like we're in Southern Illinois. I said, it's like a five and a half hour drive. Yeah. And so he texted me the next morning. He goes, that was an incredibly long drive. <laughs> <laughs> Not much, but cornfields on the way down here. But yeah, so we're in the Southern, yeah. Southern part of Illinois. Uh, we were on the July episode. Um, and then, uh, also I will promote it because he did a wonderful job, but we had an article, uh, by Ryan Fagan in the sporting news, um, in May that he did a fantastic job that did a way better job than any kind of rambling I'm doing here and kind of explaining what we do. Um, but we have, it's hard, Greg, it's hard because you guys do so much in it and touch so many people's, uh, lives, you know what I mean? And it's, uh, when I was, when I was learning, learning a little more about you guys, I was like, geez, he's all over the place in a good way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so honestly we, it, it, yeah. So we're, we're hard to explain. Um, that's why we really invite anybody that's within a, a driving distance to come see us because even when Ryan came down, he said, man, like he was here about an hour and he said, I'm going to be honest, like. I thought this was one thing and this is way different than what I could have imagined, but yeah, so we're, we're a little different. Um, so in terms of the hobby world, there is skepticism sometimes that we run into that, like, really, do you give everything away? Like if we donate things of value, are you going to keep anything? Um, we don't keep anything like my personal collection, even, I mean, everything I've owned has been for sale for 23 years. Um, we do have, I'm looking at one little display case. We do keep cards, uh, from local athletes or schools that we've served, but I mean, the, the, val there's no value in anything that we keep, but so there is some skepticism that we kind of have to overcome that. Yes, we really honestly give 100% away of what we do. And then even those in the philanthropy world, they're like, why, what the heck is cards all about? Like it's tying those two things together. So we, you know, it's getting the the hobby world and the philanthropy world together, kind of marrying them to and, and trying to explain what we do. And so everybody's like, oh, so you do schools. And it's like, yeah, we do schools, but we now we also do senior citizens and we do foster care. It's just in our area, there's just so many needs and there's not too many social service agencies that we've kind of just shouldered the load. And like I said, I can't say enough that like cards have allowed us to do those things. And until you kind of get down here and see, you know, what we do, it is kind of hard to explain. Guys, I know you got extra base cards around the guys, cards, you, cards you don't uh, care about anymore, cards that you can use to help out uh, a great charity. Go to www.canscanbenton.org and you can click on the donate and uh, you can find all the information out to do, uh, how to donate. You can follow uh, Greg and his ministry at Cans Cam Ministries on Twitter and on Facebook. Um, he's doing, he's he's helping out a, a community in need, and it's a really great thing. He does have a a store. If you're ever in the Southern uh, Benton area, you can go check. I don't it out know why it. anybody come down here, but if you are, we welcome you down here. Yeah, it's open Saturdays from seven nine to to one. And uh, I'm sure it's the 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 social center of uh, Ben, right? Yeah, you know, and it's fun. Uh, that, that is, it is the social center because at any given time, we've got 30 or 40 teachers and, and social workers in here. Uh, we've got hobbyists and collectors up in the front. So sometimes there are strange looks abounding in, in our place here. All right, guys, do good. Do good with your cards. Can, uh, Greg is doing a great, great job. And, and uh, Greg, we'll, we'll, we'll stay in touch. Okay, my friend? outstanding thank you sir okay thank you very much i really appreciate it scanning and cataloging your collection has never been easier thanks to the free collects app join over 1 million other collectors in digitizing and pricing your collection once you've scanned some cards you can easily list them for sale or buy from other collectors and now you can even get your first five dollars to spend on the app by just scanning a card adding it to your collection, and listening to it for sale. Download Collects, that's Collects, C-O-L-L-X, free on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today. I really like to see when people um, use the, the, the passion of our hobby to help out people. You know, we love Tim and Signatures of Soldiers. There's, all, there's, a, there's a lot of people out there that are doing good, and, and Greg is one of them. So I hope you enjoyed my interview with Greg. All right, that wraps up Collector's Corner. Next up, we have... 
Clemente's World. That's with Clemente Lisi, of course. Clemente Lisi is a regular com- contributor to the show. He comes on just maybe once a month, sometimes twice a month. Uh, and Clemente's uh, really a hockey guy, a soccer guy, and he's TTMs as well. So uh, we talked to Clemente. Clemente was just back from the expo in Toronto. He went to the show, picked up a bunch of stuff, which was rather cool. He sent Drew and I some Tim Horton packs, which was really, really nice. Uh, I'm I'm jonesing for Tim Horton packs, Drew. You open there's, there's only about there's three cards in the in a pack, and they're all very very cool. Not good for TTM, but they're really they're really cool cards. So we talked to Clemente about the Toronto show. We talked to Clemente about um, upcoming voting on the 2024 uh, hockey NHL hockey Hall of Fame, yep. or uh, it's not an NHL. It's right. It's just a hockey Hall of Fame. Uh, he uh, Clemente actually went to the hockey Hall of Fame inductions ceremony when he was up in toronto for the show and uh he clemente is great his content is awesome so please enjoy uh clemente in clemente's world this segment is sponsored by cgc cards all card grading all in one place certified guarantee company cgc devoted to the expert grading of collectible cards visit cgccards.com today if it's soccer, hockey, or collectibles, it's in Clemente's world. It's time for Clemente's world with Clemente Lisi. All right, guys, lace up those skates, get ready. It's time to talk a little hockey with our friend Clemente Lisi. It is time for Clemente's world. Clemente's world, yay! Clemente's world. Welcome back, Clemente. Great to be here. Happy Thanksgiving. First. I know, I know we're going to talk a little um, Toronto, but I need to know uh, food. I love food. I love food when people travel. Did you did, did you hit anything, any good restaurants, any any uh, Canadian? Did you get to poutine? Did you get anything, anything interesting in Toronto? No, I didn't do the poutine thing, though. I have done that in Montreal. My, my son would be is so jealous. He loves it. Poutine. Anytime we go north, he, that's what he wants. I will say that the two things I had that were really good was one I had a, at the, one of the hotels I was staying, or at least a friend was staying. I had something called a Canadian burger and there was like maple syrup and bacon in it. And it was really tasty. Okay. And I, I like that a lot. It was a, it was a Canadian twist on a hamburger. So I, so I had that. The other one that was good, but I did too much of it. And I'm glad I don't live in Canada was I did a lot of Tim Hortons. I, you know, I got the Tim bits, I got the donuts, I had sandwiches there, all because I was getting, you know, packs of cards. <laughs> and so if that was in, if, if I had a Tim Hortons like near my house or in New York anywhere, I would be spending way too much money and my diet would be out. But I will I say. I know it's the, it's like Dunkin' Donuts, you eat that stuff. It's just not good for you, but it's, it, it tastes so good. <laughs> yeah. And I will say Tim Hortons uh, donuts, I think give a run to Dunkin', but anyway. I agree. Lot. Yeah, I give Tim Hortons, Tim Hortons a thumbs up on the, their donuts. I like them. Yeah, so because there was a Tim Hortons located not far from the International Center where the Toronto Sport Expo was happening, that would be the place I'd get coffee. And then like in the middle of the show, I'd leave the show, go get like lunch or get like a donut. And like I, I was hitting Tim Hortons two or three times a day and then I was buying packs. Did so they have it, plenty of packs? Because I, was, so, I wasn't sure because of the... The convention that they they'd be selling out of packs pretty quickly. Yeah, so the first day I got there, there were no packs, and I got the impression that maybe. And then there's another Tim Hortons further down the road that had no packs too, and I thought, oh, maybe the pack thing is done. And then the next day, I saw somebody buy packs in front of me, and I thought, oh, they must have gotten a refresh. So I got ten packs then, and so people were buying packs, but I think they don't last long. They last a couple of days, then they have to get new shipment in. Yep. Um, and so, but it, it's a fun chase, I think, for people who live in Canada. It's it's a lot of fun. Well, you know, let's let's talk here about your puck junk article. Um, I know you you wrote a, a great article. Go to guys, you got to go to puckjunk.com. If you haven't signed up for their newsletter, you're missing something because they have a great newsletter. Clemente uh, writes a, an article for them all the time, uh, comparing the uh, Toronto show to the National and, and some of the things that the National can learn from the Toronto show. Why don't you just just uh, touch base a little on that and, and uh, i know you're, you 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 got people thinking which is nice yeah yeah so i've been to two nationals atlantic city and uh, chicago and i've been to two expos and the expo is held twice a year always in toronto so i thought you know we're gonna have new people running the national and the national look it's a great show it's ginormous but there are things that they do at the expo that i think we can learn from and of course 
I'll run through them. One one being, you know, there were a lot more hockey signers. Now, the big headline at the expo was Ric Flair and Mike Tyson. That's great. But they had like 30 something hockey people, which is understandable. It's the Hall of Fame weekend. Right. What did the national have? One. Yeah, they had one. You know, Murray Bannerman, right? He was the only yeah, one. Right, right. And they have Yager. In I Chicago, think. in Chicago, an original six city, they, they they should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah. So, so, you know, I understand it's Canada, it's a national sport, but to have 35 or 36 people signing hockey at the expo and having one or two, including Marcel Dion was only at the VIP night. That right. doesn't, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, especially when it's in Chicago. So I thought number one, you got to have more hockey signers. Even if you have four or five of them, I mean, Chicago sports spectacular this weekend will have more hockey signers than the national did. It doesn't make any sense. So hockey signers, that's number one. Number two, because the expo is always in the same place, they've got the logistics down. People know it's there. It's in Toronto. They, it's in the same building. You know, any growing pains they have, they can manage. The national mo- tries to move around. And when you move around to different cities, different convention centers, you don't have that, you know, continuous nature. So yeah, I thought. The cons- at the yeah. consistency, right, Clemente? Because right. The, you had the first day you're really learning, okay, well, where are the guys signing? Where's the best places? Where, where do I get my tickets? Where do I... Where do I find the the uh, the the photos or whatever I want? You, you have to kind of lay get the lay of the land, right? And so what happens is, but not only that, you have to worry about are the hotels near the convention center. Are there any good restaurants? Look, we've been to Atlantic City. Some people have been to Cleveland, where it's going to sh- be this summer. Um, we've seen it in Chicago. Chicago is a lot like Toronto. It's right near the airport, so it's Toronto. There's hotels and restaurants not far away. And it just, it makes sense logistically. So I said, you know, have it in Chicago every year. That point got a lot of people upset with me. People are like, they, they were even people saying they prefer Atlantic City, which I thought was a bit crazy. But we had, had, had a conversation going, which is good. Look, we'll see. I may be I may be proven right. If Cleveland isn't as good as Chicago was last year, look, let's be honest. Chicago will get it the next two or three years. So it means the dealers like Chicago it's central to the East Coast and the West Coast. Look, yeah. I'd love it for it to travel more, but the fact that it's only going to be in potentially Chicago or Cleveland or Atlantic City, and that it only does this dance among these three cities, that's not much of a national if it's only three cities. So I say, put it in Chicago. Just put it in one place. So did that you got- rent a car, did you rent a car in Toronto? Did you did you need a car in Toronto? No, no. I mean, I walked. I'm a New Yorker, so my my hotel was literally 10 minutes by walking i walked 10 minutes you know like i walked it in chicago i walked 10 minutes to that hotel too and it was fine yeah so you know and it was a lot cooler in chicago in uh, toronto it was in the 40s when i was there but nonetheless it wasn't bad or you could just uber it by, you know if you really needed to so in the end it, it, it logistically it works and i think in that sense chicago makes a lot of sense i think a lot of people agreed with me but the you know on social media and on the in the chat in the comment section people that did not agree with me made it heard, which is good. I want my pieces to be, you know, people debating them. So those were the two really big ones that I thought were um, really important in terms of, of, of things that they can learn from the show. Um, but the, the, the more hockey signers is a must. And I, I hope they get, I'm not saying 30, that doesn't make any sense, but you got to have between five to 10. My fear is that Cleveland is not much of a hockey town. So there's no, oh, need. I know. There's no need to call any hockey signers into Cleveland because you won't even have that local flavor that you would have had potentially in Chicago. So I, my fear is that at the next national, we may see zero hockey signers. And that, I think, is 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 a big, big uh, mistake, potentially. Who were the big um, people in Toronto in terms of the in terms of crowds, in terms of lines? Did you take did you take notice on uh, who, who was garnering a lot of interest in Toronto? Yeah, so so Mike Tyson, it was pretty crazy the kind of crowd he got. But you know, I don't think he, there's a lot of Canadian signings, which makes sense. Yeah. Um, um, the one that I got a big, big reception was Carey Price. Uh, a lot of people came to see him, and I mean, right every- now, would he get that same thing in in uh, you know in the United States, someplace? You know, maybe you know if maybe in Boston or New York he would, and and you would think in Chicago, but I don't know. Right, and so right, so you had you know these players who either recently retired or even current players like they had max domi from the maple leafs they had current maple leafs players because the leafs were in town that week so having current players is always a big draw because it's hard to get current players yep and it's in toronto so every maple leafs fan was there for that the other component that they do at the expo that i pointed out in my piece was 
they do player panels. So they'll have players sit in the panel with someone for 10, 15 minutes, take questions, and you really get to see and hear from these old legends about the game, which is really, really fun. They don't do any of that at the national. There's no, there's, there's a, there's a main stage. Often the people on the main stage are people who are content creators and yep. you know, five, five people are sitting there and no one's paying attention. It just makes noise. I think they need to make it more like comic con where people are just not there just for the cards or for the autographs. They're there also for an experience. And the expo really had that down every day. They had several panels, you know, with, with players and I thought it was really, really good. And I think that's something that the national can do. And I, and I enjoyed that. And, but, you know, the, the, the question really is, who wasn't at the expo? I mean, Marcel Dion was there and players from his era, all kinds of athletes. Yeah, I saw Bernie Perrant was there, right? And Bernie Perrant was there. And he did a panel uh, with Sal Barry at Puck Junk. He did a panel with him and talked about his playing days and about goaltenders today. You know, it was a little bit of a, you know, get off my lawn kind of talk. But, you know, he was an old timer. You know, and it's great. He to hear had, he's he's a really he's really good though. Bernie Pratt's really, really good. good. He told a great story about you know Bob, you know who was the one player he really hated to face, and he said, "Look, it was Bobby Hull. Bobby Hull had like a ninety mile per hour shot, a curved stick. He goes, he goes, I whenever he shot the puck at me, I was hoping it would go in so it wouldn't hit me. You know, <laughs> so stuff like that was you know I like to hear those stories. It was really really good, and so. I'm hoping that the national took note and is going to make it more fan friendly, more like a fan expo because look, the cards are great, but if you're going to be there for four days, five days, that starts to get old after a while. You know, you need, you need to engage people through other means. And I hope that that, that happens. And, but like I said, the, the one sticking point was really the venue. And I think that's the biggest question about the national going forward is where will you hold this thing that we love so much? Yep. And and logistically, does it make sense where to hold it? And look, Cleveland's a big question mark, but Chicago last year, this past summer, was a lot of fun, as you know. I agree. Now, so is Toronto have, all on one floor? Toronto's all on one floor, but they've expanded it because like the National, it's getting bigger and bigger and more and more people. So what they did was they created an autograph pavilion. Great idea. So the autographs are in one section. The trade show is on the other. But the problem is it's linked by we can call it a hallway or, or a much more narrow corridor. And they had tables in that corridor. The problem is when the major signers were signing, like a Mike Tyson, the Carey Price, the big names, people couldn't get through that, that corridor. It was like, it was like, it took 15 minutes just to cross this. Yeah. Just a, tra just a traffic jam. Just foot traffic. That would take normally a minute. And so that was a problem. That was the one thing I didn't point out in the piece, but that's a problem that they need to figure out you know, but the but the expo is getting the same thing as the national. The hobby is huge in Canada. And I, I noticed a lot of Americans now going to the expo because they want hockey, they want more, they want more shows, they want more content, they want they they want more of a variety. And they know the expo is a big show. The other right, side I know the the expo's had problems with guys uh get canceling. I know Reggie Jackson canceled this year and Tim Raines and yeah, all their uh, baseball Dave guys. Field. Yeah, all their baseball guys seem to have canceled, which is really a bummer. If you went to the expo hoping to get some baseball guys or some former players who played in Canada, you know, yeah. you, you you were you were not a luck, which is a shame. Uh, but they did have several of the Hall of Famers that um, got inducted that weekend, including Tom Barrasso, Mike Vernon, and they got decent crowds. Tom Barrasso not known to be a signer, so people were really looking for to get people that don't sign as much and they don't do TTM. So the only place to get them is at this show, and so that's why you had crowds, I think, for those people. Tell tell me a little about the Hall of Fame. I haven't I haven't been to the Hall of Fame in a, a while. Have they uh, upgraded it? How was what was the um the the crowds for the Hall of Fame? And because you were up there for the uh, induction, you got to see some of these guys do their speeches, right? Yeah. So the speeches were great, and because the speeches again are a lot like a panel where they talk about their past that they thank who they have to thank, you know, that that kind of thing, and. There were a lot of fans that went to that. There's very little overlap between fans, I think, that went to the expo and the hall. Because Really? I mean, there was maybe a little bit, but I, people I was talking to were telling me I went to the expo, not the hall, because they figured, why well, can get these people here? But then, for example, Mike Vernon and Tom Barrasso came to the expo but didn't do a panel because they were doing a panel at the Hall of Fame. So you could, you know, so I, they, they did do a Hall of Fame panel, which was fun because they talked about their childhood and uh, when they were playing in the NHL and who they hate to face and all that stuff. So there was some interactive stuff at the Hall of Fame. And then the Hall of Fame has been 
totally upgraded in the last uh, 10, 15 years. It's all very modern, uh, a lot of interactive uh, features. It, it's probably one of the nicest Hall of Fames you can visit. And if you're looking for great merchandise, they have a great gift shop. I mean, it, it's worth going to Toronto just to go to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And if Do you the fans go, have access to getting autographs at the Hall of Fame or no? Not really. And that's no. the thing. I think that's why the people that went to the expo were looking for autographs and looking for that, look for memorabilia. You needed to go to, you know, the Hall of Fame was selling, actually say auctioning off memorabilia signed stuff on their website through Fanatics. So if you want to get a piece of that, you have to have bought it on the website. Right, at a premium was, though. At a premium. Otherwise you have to go to the expo and try to get them there. So people did that because it was much cheaper to get them at the expo. Now at the expo, um, were people buying stuff in Canadian or in U.S. dollars or how, what was what 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 was the what was the uh, logistics of it? Did you t- yeah. t- did you have to turn all your money into Canadian dollars and then? So there were one or two dealers that were from the United States who kind of joked that they would take they would take dollars because it was easy. But all the prices and the whole show is Canadian, so you have to exchange your money. Luckily, between my hotel. And the expo center there is a bank. So I, I changed my money there because the ATM machines in the expo center do overtime. Like they run out of money because a lot of people are changing money or getting money. Right. Because they're not thinking of that. But the good thing for Americans is that if you see a card for 100 Canadian, it's really $80. So it's cheaper. You know, it's cheaper. Yeah. So, so in that sense, it looks like you're getting deals. The truth is you're not getting deals. You're paying what you would pay in the United States. Right. Um, no, I, a lot I, of I understand work- that. Yeah, but but it is that's the one thing about the expo that I don't like is that you have to exchange money. Let's not forget you're in another country and you have to do the math in your head and you have to get the money. And then you know the, the key is you never want to come home with money from another country, so you have to exchange it back or whatever. You want to take out just enough. Right. Yeah, you're, you're sitting there at the end of the expo, like, okay, I guess I guess I'll buy that car because I really don't want this Canadian monopoly money. You're right. So you're like, hey, I have 30 Canadian. What do we, what can I buy for 30 Canadian that is okay to, t- to buy? You know, so I did a little bit of that. It's almost like Price is Right. You try not to go over. But so, you know, so it's a bit of a dance. If you do it the first time, it's hard. I've been, I've done this once before. So it was a lot easier to deal with the Canadian money and all that. But, but don't let that stop you. If you want to go to the expo, which is in April in the spring, people should go. It's a great show. What did you pick up? Like, what did you what did you pick up at the show? What did you go in with an idea of like, OK, I want to pick up this card, this card, that card? Or did you did you? No, I like to because I cannot do this at any American show, which is go through the dollar boxes of the yep. 80s, 60s, 70s, 80s. OPC. That, you and I, that's you and I favorite. We could we could spend the yeah. whole show just doing that. I mean. I went in, I got the VIP thing. I went in the first day. I went through the first aisle. Halfway to the first aisle, there was a guy who had all that stuff. I took a chair and I sat there and I basically spent half of the, you know, that first night basically going through this guy's boxes and getting, you know, stuff for my, for my sets, cards that I hadn't seen in a long time, but, but the Opeachy versions, not the tops ones. Yep. And so that was really fun to do that. And then, you know, they had the big, you know, they had the big cards, the, the $4,000 cards. I, I didn't go in with any kind of wish list. I went in there th- kind of thinking, let me see if I see stuff I don't I've never seen before, stuff I have I've only seen online, not in person. So I didn't go in with a list. I went in and I got a lot of commons. So I spent the first day maybe fifty dollars Canadian just buying like stuff like that, like like dollar cards because it was great to have, and also because they were autographed guests. I wanted to get stuff to sign at the show, so I got that stuff there, and then. I didn't get any big cards. I I will say I think the prices at the expo were really inflated. They were expensive. So for I wonder example, why because the prices on a whole are coming down. As yeah, a high. I, yeah, and I don't know if this happens with baseball at the national, but I think because ninety percent of the dealers are hockey, I feel like some people had cards for fifteen twenty dollars, and some guy had the same card for two hundred, like yeah. another all over. I couldn't figure out the discrepancy, maybe because. It's hard to have competition when everyone has hockey. So I wondered if that's the case. And I wonder if that's the case with other sports. I just never noticed. So the prices were all over the place, which was very confusing. And so a card that was 20 Canadian in one place could be 100 somewhere else. You know, at the National, you're always told if you see a card, buy it because they may not have it. Not here. I would say keep walking around because you may overpay for something early on and then be kicking yourself later and saying, wait. Is that a $20 card? I paid $100 for that. 
So, um, and the Canadians are much more polite than Americans. A lot of people were not doing the whole cops thing on the on eBay. They were not doing that. Yep. So I think that a lot of people might have paid overpaid for cards. But the big, you know, the big names, of course, at the show um, normally are Gretzky and and McDavid, and that was still true because the Oilers are doing so badly. McDavid's stock was really down. So people, not that the cards were cheaper, they just didn't put out as many McDavid cards. I saw a lot of Crosby, a lot of Ovechkins, you know, a lot from that class. I thought, you know, people want those cards from that from those years. And Sidney Crosby is is a big deal in Canada. I was you know? gonna say, hasn't Crosby? I think his his cards have had a big upswing recently. They really have, and I don't know why that is. Maybe they're hoping. I think that... because of the marketing, the marketing of Crosby with Connor Bedard. And Maybe. I think that I think they're 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 doing a lot to feature him, and you know he's on the on the uh, Tim Horton packs, and I think yeah. I think he's just he's he's so omnipresent for the hobby. I think. Yeah, and people are remembering. Oh, yeah, he helped Canada win a gold medal, and he's you know he's he's one of the best Canadian players ever. And he's actually on a team, the Penguins, that could make the playoffs and go far. The Oilers are at the bottom of the heap. So you know, and it's early in the season, of course, but that had a huge influence, I think, on what people put in the showcase on the prices, and then what people were actually looking for. So it was very interesting. How about Connor Bedard? Did you see any of his uh, cards? I know the series one has some. Um short prints but the you know we're, we're still we're all going to be waiting for series two right yeah so for series two you get his young guns car that's february march um in the meantime you have to you know be, the people are looking for his canadian cards his canadian junior cards his, his minor league cards which will drop in value after the his young guns cards come out yep. and then he had that easter egg from series one which was at the show which now you can get on ebay for 300 dollars at the show there were maybe i saw about seven or eight of them they were all Five, six, seven hundred Canadian. A lot of wow. money, and they were not graded. And that price, those cards will drop Im- immensely. They were hoping, I think, the dealers to to ride the hype machine. But those Bedard cards I just mentioned, Saturday afternoon, they were still there, and the show started on Thursday, so those cards weren't moving. They yeah, were still- I mean, collectors know you can't you can't fool collectors, right? They, I mean, they no. they just. They, they, everyone wants the, the young gun card, and that's coming up. We'll talk a little about series one uh, a little later. Fomo. People have FOMO, but people are also not stupid. Well, we got, I know you went to the Hall of Fame and uh, you wrote an article for Sports Collectors Day uh, Digest, right? Right. About about the Hall, the Hall, the Hall of Fame. Um, and I, I think you and I are on the same page in terms of um, goaltenders have been uh, not represented across the board for, for the Hall of Fame. And we have, you know, we have Jerry Cheevers and we have Barrett Bernie Ferrand, we have Ken Dryden, but on a whole, uh, Tony Esposito, but I think on a whole, I think they've been shortchanged and in, in, um, almost kind of like the shortstops in baseball, right? They they yeah. kind of yeah, about fourteen percent of the people in the hall are goaltenders. That's not a yeah. lot, um, and it's interesting. I did, my story is about the Hall of Fame, but also are goaltenders going to get more hobby love as a result of having three goaltenders? You know, Vernon Barrasso and Lundquist all got inducted now. I know there's a kind of a list out there of, you know, Hall of Fame potentials for 2024. Yeah, we're going to uh, look at that in a minute. <laughs> right. So, you know, it's interesting, but I've always made the argument that people like Curtis Joseph, uh, Mike Richter, these guys should be in the Hall of Fame and they're not. And they retired a long time ago. They played in the 90s. Now, Tom Barrasso and Mike Vernon did as well, which makes me think that people are revisiting players from that era, the junk wax era, and, and saying, well, look, maybe, maybe. Maybe someone like Mike Vernon deserves to be in the hall. He won two Stanley Cups with two different teams. Tom Barrasso won two back-to-back Cups with the Penguins, right? So, you know, they're getting more love, I think, in the Hall of Fame. And that could translate into hobby love further on, further down. But look, hockey is a game of scoring, I point out in my piece. And people just love scorers. They yeah. love Crosby. Funny, you know what? I have I have a soft spot for for goalies and defensemen. I I really that's the I gravitate more more towards those guys than, than the scorers, honestly. Right. So you know we'll see what happens down the road, but I do think that goaltenders have been shortchanged. It's not even a, an opinion; it's a fact. We we know that, and so we'll see what happens going forward. All right. Let's look at it, some of the guys that are up for 2024. Um, we got a, we have a bunch of guys. Let's run down the list quickly. We don't have to spend a lot of time on each guy. Um, and I think what do you think? You think they're gonna like two or three of these guys are gonna get in for this year? I'd say of this group, I would say three, maybe four get in. 
All right, let's we're going to start at the top, start at the top and run down. Uh, Shane Weber is he? I, I don't think he's a Hall of Fame. Would you agree? No. Curtis Joseph. I mean, he was yes. really he was a good player with the the St. Louis Blues, right? Yeah, and 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 yeah, and then later Toronto. Yeah, um, no, I think Curtis Joseph needs to get in. I think uh, Cujo was a great goaltender, and you know would and would satisfy that urge I have to have more goalies in. So I think he he can get in. Yeah, I'd like to see him get into. I was always he he was always a um a big game goalie, right? He yeah. wasn't. He's one of those guys that that honestly, I'd rather have him in the net than, than Andy Mo, Moog or some of these other guys that, that we we had. Some right. of the guys that your Rangers had, you know. Yes. <laughs> For sure. All right. All right. Henrik Zetterberg. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think so. It's a question mark, I think. Oh, yeah. How about Ilya Kovalka? Kol- 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 no. Yeah. Kol- well, this is interesting because he was, you know, a scorer. He's also Russian. You know, we should understand this is not the NHL Hall of Fame. This is the Hockey Hall of Fame. No, I know. Right. And so I, think I think the Russians get a get uh, a pass on it sometimes because. Right. Right. Because of the exposure they had or whatever it was. I mean, Kovalchuk played in the NHL, I, so I think he's a maybe. I think he's a maybe. How about Keith Kachuk? Keith Kachuk, I think, could be a Hall of Famer. I think he's. He was I a think good so player. too. He's a good player. I really player. do. He was. He was a hell of a player. Yeah, he really was, and I think he bridges that divide between the '90s and the present. You know, the 2000s, early 2000s. I think he. he I think he can get in. Ryan Miller, not enough. Not enough, I think. I mean, it's interesting. If they want to like go for a repeat here and go for another like US born goaltender type of thing, I don't know. I think I, I think it's a think tough, given, I don't think given, he's got it. Given the names on this list, I think it's a tough sell. I Rob Brindamore, good defenseman, not not the guy though. I, I don't think I don't think he gets in. I don't think he gets in. Sergey Gonchar, my he played for the Bruins and played for a bunch of teams. Uh no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Patrick Merlot, I really like him. Yeah, you know, he he had a very long career. And so as a result of playing so many seasons, he has a lot of statistics, but I don't know. He that could... goes a long way though in the in the voters' eyes. These you know, guy guy that's played 14, 15 years and has has accumulated a lot of points and a lot of minutes on the ice. They like they like that. They like compilers. I mean, in baseball, we know they do, but in hockey, it's hard to do that. But Maybe he's a, he's you know he's a maybe to yes I would say. Okay, uh, how about Pavel uh, Datsu? He was good. He was good, but I don't. I mean, how many can you get in? You know, this is a long. No, list. I know the next yeah, guy's no. getting in. The next guy's definitely. I think I think he's not getting in. Okay, I, I'll get. I I would give him a wash. How about uh, Alexander or, uh, McGinley? Definitely right. Yeah, he's getting in. I think. I think he's. He, he. I mean, when you look at this list, he's really the the one guy that's like the first ballot. You know, when you look at the list, yeah. you're like, okay, McGinley, yeah, is, you, can't, you don't really argue if he's a Hall of Famer or not. I agree. I think he'll he'll get in. He'll be the headliner of this class if 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 there is such a thing. Yeah. Now, do they have a veterans committee like the baseball so that, like, you know, my our guy Reed Larson is he does he have a shot of ever getting in? You know, where does? Oh, yeah, you know, it's not a veterans committee type of thing. It's a very secretive type of committee. I think it's 13 members, and players don't necessarily disappear. Like. They can induct a guy from 80 years ago tomorrow yeah. if they want to. So nobody, you know, nobody falls off the list. I think the list is just kind of gets larger and larger and larger. But at some point, no one's advocating for you anymore. You know, or, like Curtis Joseph, if he doesn't get in the if he doesn't get in, in the next five years, he's never gonna get in because at that point, people people's memories will have faded and people right. on the committee are gonna forget. And so they're gonna move on. But look, the fact that Vernon and Barrasso got in makes me think that they're looking towards the past a little bit and not just the guy who retired five years ago. Yeah, I mean, the one guy that, that bothers me that's not in is Rick Middleton. I, I mean, you you saw him play Rick Middleton. Rick, yeah. Rick Middleton was a Hall of Famer. Yeah, yeah. He just yeah. didn't win a Stanley Cup. You know what I mean? He, he had a tough time playing on those, those Bruins I also, teams. But... I also think when you're voting, if the guy didn't wear a helmet, you get five points just for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. I, I love and, that. And I honestly, the, you know, I, I don't know the, these other guys, but I I have a soft spot for Rick Middleton because I know him. I've had him on the show. I've talked to him a bunch of yeah. times. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree. And so there's those guys like that who fall into that nether zone, which will, they'll never, they could be Hall of Famers and maybe in other sport they would be, but in hockey, they're just not, unfortunately. From a collecting standpoint, if you were, were looking at somebody like, okay, this guy's going to be a Hall of Fame, I should pick up his rookie card. Is McGinley the, car, the guy? 
Yeah, but McGillney's cards are also from kind of the junk wax. So oh, I, mean, I know. Yeah, so I mean, which I love. I picked. I don't know if I told you. I was at um at the card show at the in Wilmington a couple weekends ago, and I picked up a Tom Barrasso rookie card in oh. the the quarter box. Yeah, yeah. You know no. what I mean? Like, I mean, I, look, if you're I couldn't get, I couldn't let it go. <laughs> you're collecting right. If you're collecting Hall of Fame rookies, which is something that I like to do. And you want to get that card for one dollar and get it graded, and then you have a ten dollar card. It's great because it checks off a box without having to spend a thousands of dollars. Now, this list we went through, there's nobody really on here whose card, you know, Patrick Marlowe. I got his rookie card a couple of years ago. I think it's a, he's in a Canadian gear. His card came a little later, but even that was affordable. That was like maybe fifty dollars. So it's you know, so none of these guys on here are going to be. It's it isn't until we get to like. Crosby, McDavid, and Ovechkin retiring, that those rookie cards are going to be, oof, they're expensive right. now. So, yeah, the, I, I say I say go out and get all 10 of the 13 of these guys, get their rookie cards, because you're not going to go wrong. They're going to be fairly cheap. Right. We're in the, we're in our sweet spot right now, Clemente. This is we this are. our era. <laughs> we totally are. We totally are. Yeah. All right, buddy. Let's just run down. Uh, you know, Series 1 came out. Have you, did you, did you um, while talking tops, uh, tops. Uh, upper deck series one for hockey. There is no, uh, there's no Bedard in there in terms of there was, there was a couple. There was an insert we were talking about that. Did you pick up a box of series one and and uh, you know I've been looking for them retail and I haven't seen them. Yeah, so I, I have bought a box and it retails for about one forty. Now the blaster boxes, the tins, all that stuff came out yeah. really recently. I saw it at the show. I haven't seen it at my local Target, but you probably will. I'd say it's worth getting, you know, either a box for 140. It's more than it should be because of this Bedard Easter egg. Otherwise, get two blasters and just have fun with it, you know, and uh, and do that. And then, you know, and then the young guns that come in this box, we don't know. In six months, it could be, it could be a really good young guns. We just don't know now. It's too early. Everyone's no, chasing. No, I know. Do you are you a set guy? Do you try? Are you collecting a set, or you just get them? And I do the I do uh, I do the set for yeah, like I do. I do too. It's kind of, and it, it's hard. Uh, so I'm hoping that we can see series one soon in, you know, retail target and Walmarts. All right, yeah. let's, let's do a little TTM. I know we've kept, kept you longer than, than yeah. we usually like to, but we have, we have so much to talk about. And I love to love, love yeah. talking all the, the hockey cards with you and talking the show. So how you been doing on TTMs? Pretty good. I sent a bunch out and, you know, hopefully they'll be coming between now and Christmas. But usually what I do, and I think a lot of people do this, they follow your league. They follow the show. They follow. They look at the guests on the show, right? So you had Reed Larson on a couple of weeks back, and, you know, I got him to sign a 7980 OPG card. Nice. That came out nice. And that's one of my favorite sets because, you know, it's 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 Bobby Hull and Gordie Howe's last card. Don't you love that Bobby Hull card? That, yeah, and it's also Wayne Gretzky's, anyway, it's Wayne Gretzky's rookie year. So right. it's, it bridges two generations. And then you have so many guys in the middle there that are really good. So I love, I love those cards. And so I see a lot of those. My favorite the- card from that set, honestly, is Dave Dryden's card. I love Dave Dryden's card, just regular oh. base card in that set. He, right. He's so cool. And then at the show, you know, I had the VIP. So I got one autograph that came with it. So I spent that on getting Paul Coffey of the Oilers. On oh, this. nice. How was, how was he? Because he's been, oh, he, he's great. So he's great. So you know, usually when someone is signing, you basically go up to them. And, you know, I say stuff like, "Thanks for coming out. Thanks for doing this." You know, you want to thank them. And the guy, and you know, Paul Coffey goes to me. He goes, well, "Where are you from?" I said, "Well, I'm from New York City." He goes, "Really, New York? That's great." He goes, "I love New York." I go, "I'm sure you got lots of stories about playing at the Garden." He goes, "Oh yeah, I love playing at the Garden. Even when they redid the Garden, I love the Garden." But he goes, "Where are you from in New York? Like New York City?" I go, "Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn." He goes. Oh, they got the best pizza there. He goes, this is a place right over the bridge. I go, yeah, you mean Grimaldi's pizza? He goes, yeah, that place. And so we started talking about pizza, you know, and really, really affable guy. I will say this about him, though. He he still works out because he looked like he was in great shape. He's got huge hands. And look, for us older people, Paul Coffey was an amazing Oh, defense. he was so good. Yeah, he was. He, yeah, yeah, you know what? As a as when as a, an opponent, I hated going against Paul Coffey because he knew he was going to screw you. Yeah, and not <laughs> only that, I mean, he was in those teams with you know those Oilers teams that were so good, but because yeah. he played defense, you didn't hear about him as much as you heard about Gretzky and Messi and uh, you know those guys, Yari Curry. But I mean, he was a big part of that team, 
and just a really nice guy. And, you know, not a lot of people were getting his autograph compared to like Carey Price or other people. But look, when you get a card for a dollar at the show and then you get him, you know, part of as part of your admission, you can't go wrong. And he doesn't yeah, I know that's a win win, right? He doesn't TTM unless I guess if you write about pizza, then maybe he might. I don't know. <laughs> and then the other guy I got, I love getting these older players on these 70s cards. I got Les Binkley of the Oh, Penguins. nice. Yeah, he was a very nice guy. I think he's 92 years old now. God bless him. And he was really friendly. And again, small crowds to see him. You know, it was me and a bunch of older guys. And, you know, really affable, friendly. And at one point, Marcel Dion came over and took a picture with him. And Marcel Dion admitted he never was able to score on less. So that was kind of funny. <laughs> and the good thing about the Expo is because it's so intimate and small in some parts, some of these players are kind of palling around and you're kind of there just watching it. It's really a lot of fun. Yeah, it's fun. You know, I go to the um, the event in, in Naples every year, and that's one of the cool things is just to see the 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 guys just sitting there just talking about whatever, you know, talking about their time, talking about their opponents, talking about uh, college, just whatever they talk about. It's just really neat to just be a, a fly on the wall and listen to them talk because it's the, some of the stories you hear, you know, these guys, the, these guys, you know, they've lived history, right? A lot of these guys have lived history. So when they, when they, when these guys, you know, these guys start talking about, you know, Bobby Hull, Bobby Orr and Bobby Hall and all these guys, uh, they, they played with them. They know them. <laughs> it's kind of neat. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun to listen to those stories. All right, buddy. I give you an A plus for this, this uh, one. I really love it. This edition of Clemente's world. Why don't you let people know how they can follow you on social media and make sure let's let's promote your the, your soccer newsletter and, and uh, you know, all, all the cool content that you're doing. Yes. Yeah, so you can follow me on on Twitter or X, as we call it now, at Clemente Lisi. And I'm on there and we can talk soccer, hockey, baseball, whatever you want. Um, I have a piece in Sports Collectors Digest and I have pieces regularly in that. And the piece is on the website right now, but it will be in the next issue as well, the on goaltenders in hockey and the love they should get from the hobby. I write a monthly piece at Puck Junk at puckjunk.com and I appear on that podcast occasionally. And I will uh, in next week's show talk about the expo. I have my own soccer newsletter called Planet Soccer, where I, I cover the world of soccer and and, and everything else. That comes out every Monday, so you can get that in the mail for free. Um, what else am I not doing? I mean, and then I'm on this show once a month, so you can. There you go, and you got you had a nice, great cover story last month on Connor Bedard, and I you got to get that autograph, my friend. That's a, that that should be your number I, one. You no, know, it's funny. I was at the show. I was saying, you know, if I could ever get Bedard's autograph, it would be on the on that magazine cover that I wrote the piece on, and you know. In my lifetime, it could happen that Bedard at some point signs autographs or will retire and I'll be an old man. Right. And he's I, only 18 years old. And he's only 18. Old. I, you know, and I'm 48. He's got plenty of time to sign. I have a 30 year lead on this guy, a 20 year. You know, <laughs> so I, have a, I have a big lead on him. But yeah. You, you and me both. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully that'll be a, a chance to do that someday. But other than that, you know, um, you know, there's plenty of hockey to watch and plenty of other stuff to do. So, you know, when the holiday season right now. So everyone enjoy. All right, buddy. Let's um. We will talk after. We'll talk maybe first or second week of December. Okay. We'll have him. We'll have Clemente back on. You can have a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy some time with your family. Don't travel so much. And uh, we will. We'll, we'll we'll keep in touch. And if you have any great TTMs, let me know. All right. Sounds good. All right, thank bud. You. Thank you. Did you know you can get your cards graded for under ten dollars with CGC cards? That's right. With an elite membership, bulk grading costs just $9.60 a card. It's one of the best deals in grading. CGC Cards has a reputation built on trust with their expert and impartial service for sports, non-sports, and trading card games. For less than $10, you can get your cards graded with an elite membership. Go to cgccards.com today. Drew, maybe about... I don't know, a year and a half ago now, Clemente, maybe two years ago, because we, we saw Clemente at the National, and that's kind of when he, we started talking to him, right? Right, and right. Clemente was, wrote a book on the World Cup, and he, he reached out to me and said, hey, I you know, wrote a book on the World Cup. You, you, know, you want to come on and can I come on and talk about it? I'm like, sure. And uh, we brought him on as our, our soccer expert, and uh, he's, a, he's a big hockey guy. He writes for Puck Junk, our friend Sal. 
And uh, I think Clemente is one of the best additions we've had on the show, Drew. He, he's just, I, every time I talk to him, I learn something and he's very entertaining, very articulate, and, and, and he's a really nice, nice guy. Absolutely. And I mean, it's good to have people who know the stuff that we don't know, because I mean, we know, you know, baseball, football, hockey, you've got base, baseball, basketball, football, hockey there. We didn't have anybody for soccer. So getting Clemente on for that and being able to add a little bit more hockey to it, always great to have him on board yeah and you know anytime we can we it's a good excuse for us to talk hockey drew right mm -hmm. you and i can talk hockey all day and I, I know i know a lot of our listeners aren't hockey guys like you and i but we love to we love to talk hockey and hopefully you guys enjoy our hockey talk with clemente so clemente thank you uh again my friend we will have clemente on uh i don't know maybe first or second week in in december and we'll we'll, we'll wrap up the year with, with clemente uh but thank you for uh clemente and clemente's world all right, Drew, next up, Making the Grade. Making the Grade is sponsored by CGC Cards. All card grading, all in one place. Certified guarantee company, CGC, devoted to the expert grading of collectible cards. Visit cgccards.com today. It's just, this grading community, Drew, it's just, it's amazing. No. It just amazes me what's going. What happens in the grading community? It's so, it's really, um, it, it's kind of like when you go to the doctor and they listen to your heart and take your blood pressure and all that. That's what that, I think. That's what the community, the grading community, is for our hobby. You know what I mean? If things are going well in the grading community, it seems like our hobby is very, very healthy and things are going well. But if you all of a sudden you see a lot of downturn in it, you kind of get stuck getting nervous. And I think it's a really this is grading is is important is an important part of our hobby it is and it's just amazing to me that saying a quarter million cards got graded this week is a bad week i mean it's got to be above that to be uh, really having a great week out there so yeah it's just i mean it's an interesting barometer of how everything looks in the in the entire collecting world really see i i struggled like for five minutes to come up with a word you a barometer bing nailed it <laughs> <laughs> You nailed it. All right, let's get, let's get some grading numbers for the week. Yeah, so we've got stuff from uh, November 6th through the 12th, so the first full week of November. PSA and SGC both up. PSA a 9% increase to 283,900 cards they graded alone. SGC a 17% increase. They saw 36,400 cards go through their offices. Beckett down a bit, a 26% drop-off. They've been kind of wavering all over the place here the last uh, bit, but Still 12,100 cards that they uh, graded during that time frame. So we're looking at uh, 320, 330,000 cards there that got uh, graded during the week. No numbers right now from a CGC once again. You know what? I think Beckett needs a promotion. They, when they run a promotion, so. the numbers just spike. I think Beckett really needs to run a promotion soon. Yeah, I mean, I've got, I've got stuff I'd like to send in there. And guys, dropping the price on that helps me to do that and helps to get, get some business your way. Hello. Hi, help me out here. So, <laughs> we're, we're trying, Drew. We're trying. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see if they uh, do something with the grading or authentication or anything like that. And anytime they do a, do a promo, I try to make sure, you know, we get it on here and everything. So I'm on their emails and all that. Yeah. I mean, usually it's been like a lot of like football themed ones has been the biggest one there they had. So, uh, I mean, let's, let's get a hockey one going, guys. I mean, I got a lot of hockey stuff I'd like to get, uh, yeah, get authenticated. That, that'd be neat. I, I agree. All right, but we get our numbers. Where do we get our numbers from? Gemrate.com. That's where we get all our grading numbers from. They're the, the best. They're the, they follow all the big four uh, grading companies as well as some uh, the industry as a whole. And one of the cool things that they do for us is they do the big three. Yep. This week's big three is brought to you by Gemrate.com. Whose cards are hot and whose cards are cold this week? Let's find out from our friends at Gemrate.com. The big three is get, lets us know uh, players who have been rising and falling uh, based on the previous week's grading uh, numbers. And we have three really uh, cool guys that are uh, on the rise this week. We have Wayne Gretzky was up 82%. His 1979 80 Opeachy card, they graded over 200 cards last week. Um, it was uh, PSA was at the uh, expo in Toronto taking submissions. So we think that's one of the reasons why the Gretzky was up so much. Also, Jason Dominguez, who was a seller at the end of the year with the Yankees, he actually got hurt. Uh, but I think he uh, turned around his his um, outlook, don't you? 
I think so. Yeah, he's. I mean, prospects are always going to be kind of up and down. People are going to overreact to everything, both good and bad. And I think honestly, the sell-off was an overreaction. So uh, we'll see what happens with him. Yep. So he was up seventy percent, and then Spencer Strider from the Atlanta Braves was up fifty-one percent. Um, I think he's the real deal. I really do. You know, you know how sometimes pitchers come in and they're hot, and then they they fizzle off. You never hear from them again. I think I think he has some stick to itiveness. I think so, and. I have a Braves fan friend who seems convinced that Otani is going to sign there and all that. So uh, that would be interesting if that happens. And that's only going to help a guy like, I mean, well, hell, like any of the pitchers on that Atlanta staff. You've got Strider there who had a great yeah. year. Had a couple other guys that have been really good. So, yeah, it'll be uh, interesting to see if that happens, what happens with somebody like Strider. And I think this is, uh, even if they don't get him, Strider's a nice one to be able to uh, to get your money into. Yep, so he was up 50% last week. So the, the big three risers were Gretzky, Dem Jason Dominguez, and Spencer Strider. Uh, the Gretzky 79-80 OPG card was up, uh, had two over 200 cards graded last week. Drew, who's the fallers? Well, the good thing is this week, we've had a few weeks where guys have been falling in like a 30 and 40% range. We don't have that this week, fortunately. The biggest uh, fallers this week, Garrett Wilson's cards were down 10% in uh, getting graded this week. Desmond Ritter down 17%, and uh, Jamar Chase down 20%. So some drops in some football players there, especially a couple of wide receivers and a quarterback there. A quarterback, I think, did Ritter just lose his starting job recently? He lost. There you him. go. So, yeah, Ritter lost his starting job recently. A couple of receivers, or the, the market's always volatile on those guys, but still none of them dropped any more than 20%. So a uh, couple of small falls there, but nothing major. Yeah, no surprises, right? No, none. Yeah. All those three guys had – have had disappointing season so far so no surprises well i want again i want to thank our friends at gemrate.com for supplying us these exclusive statistics um and we call it the big three and hopefully enjoy it we will have uh the big three next uh saturday more big three next saturday all right drew next up ttm cast stamp of approval i bet you're wondering who earned this week's ttm cast stamp of approval oh. All right, why don't you do yours? Because yours is food, and then I'll do mine. Cool. Mine's yeah, mine's so, uh, yeah, for the first time since 2019, up at Panini, we finally had a Thanksgiving luncheon for employees, which was really cool, because this used to be something we do every year. Usually the Thursday before Thanksgiving, we'd all have this uh, kind of buffet lunch at a usually like a local hotel ballroom or something like that. Have some raffles to give away stuff, and just everybody gets to hang out there for a few hours, get a state of the company address and everything from the CEO and all that. So. It's always really cool to go to. And then, of course, you know, COVID kind of wrecked that. We didn't have one in 2020 or 2021. And we thought maybe they'll do one in 2022, and they didn't. But finally, this year, it was back. So it was really great to get to go out to that. Got to, got to see all my photo department people there and hang out with them for a bit. Enjoy all the turkey and ham and sides and everything they had there. I stuffed myself real well out there. So quite good there. I didn't win anything in the raffles, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, I'll, we usually have a few more around Christmas. So hopefully I'll win something in one of those. We'll see. Yeah, you're yeah, yeah, usually pretty lucky. Not on the raffles at Panini there at all. I mean, what's uh, the gift, like the raffle gifts they've had are like all over the map. Like the usual top prize, like an iPad or something like that. And I end up winning like a Panini umbrella or something like that. So, <laughs> but I mean, I have got some cool stuff out of them before. So once in a while, I do get something really great. Others, it's like you get an umbrella. So <laughs> it's, uh, we'll see what happens. Though. I mean, I've had decent luck lately, at least. So. Maybe we'll see if I get anything this year. But yeah, right. my big, uh, my, my, my stamp approval for the week, the Panini Thanksgiving lunch for their employees, really well done. I always enjoy going to those. And hopefully next year they give us a slightly larger place for those. We were kind of crammed into this one. You know what? This time of year is, is nice to be involved with company. And, you you know, the, thanks for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and the holidays. And, it's, and, you know, Christmas bonuses. Do you guys get a bonus? We don't, but we usually have, uh, well, it varies because, I mean, one like the last couple of years, we haven't had a Christmas party at all. So in lieu of that, they sent out like a Visa gift card to everybody as kind of a Christmas bonus. So that was nice to get at least. And this year, they're back to Christmas party again. So, yeah, we'll see what happens off of anything like that. Very cool. Well, guys, my T Tim Cast stamp approval is uh, you've, you've heard her now for five years. Uh, she is the voice of TTM cast. You hear on all our bumpers, a lot of our commercials. Uh, she is my daughter, Ruthie Baker. Her birthday is today. She's 24 years old. She uh, does our bumpers and all our commercials and stuff for free. <laughs> Without her, we couldn't get, we couldn't uh, do the show, right, Drew? We need, you need a right. lot of people to, 
do the do the show when uh, you know we're five years in and uh, Ruthie has been a, a important part of the show and I think it, it she adds a nice uh, different voice for us right instead of hearing that mine mine your voice all the whole time and she's she's a, a nice addition and uh, she is a uh, doc, she's going to her master's in art at U, uh, UMass Amherst. So she's she's kind of close to home, which is nice. She came home this weekend for her birthday. We're going to take her out. Uh, we had we had uh, last night. Paula made uh, chili, homemade chili, and we we played some board games and stuff, and it was kind of fun. And then uh, we're going out to see um, what's this the 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 one the uh, Hunger Games. We're going to see the Hunger Games movie today. To, this, tonight to go, we're going to watch the Hunger Games. Then we're going to go get pizza. So we got to. I know. I know. It's really a hokey thing, isn't it true? I feel. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to thank Ruthie for her hard work. She's she does great work on it, and she's been uh, instrumental in, in the success of the show, along with with Drew and, and Clemente and Les. And uh, I just want to wish her a happy birthday, Ruthie Baker. We love you. Happy birthday, Ru. All right, Drew. That rounds up our uh, TTM stamp of approval. Next up is the Vern Rot Minute. Drew, why don't you do the, the overview of the Vern Rap Minute for everyone? Well, the Vern Rap Minute is uh, dedicated to Vern Rap, former uh, Major League manager and player that uh, Jeff wrote a uh, request to and did not know that he'd already died. So uh, we're going to try to let everybody know anytime that a uh, athlete or anybody that you might consider TTMing has passed on. So typically we try to focus on anybody in the world of sports, music, movies, celebrities, politics, anybody that's a, that's a common uh, TTM target. We'll try to let you know if they passed on. You know what, Drew? I really enjoy the Vern Rap Minute because I learn about a lot of these guys. You know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. you, you know, some of these guys I remember, obviously, and some of them I, I don't remember. But all, all of them, everyone that we list did something in sports and had some uh, milestone. Or you, know, when you make the major leagues in any of these sports, you are you are a pretty good player. You're you know you're yeah. you're at the top of your game, and it's always sad to see. Um, some, we lose somebody that, that we remember uh, in our playing days, especially guys that you and I collect in terms of we've TTM'd or, or and maybe we need them and we, we've been holding on to it for one reason or other. But um, this week we lost Rob Bell, Bellior. He was an infielder for the uh, Atlanta Braves. He was a Vietnam vet. He wow. um, actually, yeah, he actually was, uh, I forget where he, he went. He was, he was uh, like in high school or just he just got dra he got picked up by somebody and then he had to go over to Vietnam and he served uh, active duty in Vietnam. He played from 1975 to 1977. He was a good T-Timer. Last t in August of 2020. Rob Bellor, Bellor, Rob Bellor. Bellor, Yeah, it was 70. I think he played for the uh, Blue Jays as well. Okay. So uh, we lost Ken Adamson this week from the world of football. Played in the NFL or the AFL, excuse me, from 1960 to 62. One of the original members of the Denver Broncos went to Notre Dame before he uh, became a Bronco. Notice an excellent TTM or last signed in June of 2022. Ken Adamson was 85 years old. Yeah, well, he's a lot of these old AFL guys, Drew, lately. Yeah. A lot of them. Uh, we lost Johnny Green. Johnny, he was Johnny Jumping Green. He was the fifth pick in the 1959 NBA draft by the New York Knicks at Michigan State University. He played from 1959 to 1973. He played with the Knicks, the Bullets, the San Diego Rockets, the 76ers, the Royals, and the Kansas City Kings. He was a four-time All-Star. He scored over 12,000 points and grabbed over 9,000 rebounds. Drew, this kid, was, this guy was a good player. He was a really yeah. good player, actually. He didn't do much CTMing. Uh, Johnny Green was. Uh, 89 years old. I would lost Max Anderson this week. Anderson played briefly in the NFL from 1968 to 69, 25 games as a running back for the Buffalo Bills, the uh, the pre-OJ Bills. I think it was right before they drafted him. 
Yeah, he was uh, Max, OJ was seventy one. I think I think seventy because I think he won the Heisman in nineteen sixty nine. Sixty nine. So he was yeah, OJ was seventy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Max was not a TTMer. He was seventy eight years old. We lost. This is the old timers, guys. We lost Albert Endress. Albert was a defensive end with the San Francisco 49ers in 1952. We only played two games in San Francisco, but um, you know, it's a day. It was a different time. Yeah. You know, if you to play football in the in the 50s, um, it was a brutal game, and you weren't making a lot of money. And a lot of these guys went to work as opposed to playing football. In you know, after the fact, so we had we lost Albert Endress. He was 95 years old. Go along with that, too. I mean, this is an era when there are only, what, maybe 12 teams out there as well. Yeah, so. and they, they were playing in leather uh, helmets and right. no, no, I mean, you no, had no equipment. You had more roster spots than as you do now across the entire league. So you had to be yeah, because a lot of the guys played both ways. Yeah. So you had to be pretty darn good to be able to get into even just a couple of games at the NFL level. Uh, we also lost to Jeanette stalker Botazi this week. Uh, she was a member of the... All American Girls Professional Baseball League that were around back during the uh, starting during World War II on into the fifties. Uh, Jeanette was a catcher for the nineteen forty six Kenosha Comets. Uh, she was not a TTMer. She was ninety six years old. Drew, we lost former outfielder Joe Gaines. Joe Gaines uh, played uh, in par- parts of the nineteen sixty to sixty six season with the Cincinnati Reds, the Baltimore Orioles, the Houston uh, Colt forty fives, and the Astros. He was a very good TTM. He last signed in February 2023. Joe Gaines was 86 years old. Uh, we lost Devin Wiley this week. Wiley played uh, briefly in the NFL as well, 2012 and 13 with the Chiefs and the Titans. He was a wide receiver at Fresno State before that. He was an okay TTM. Last signed in late 2020. Devin Wiley was 35 years old. Drew, we lost Roman uh, Chekmanic. He was a goaltender and you know I love goaltenders. I have a soft spot yeah. for goaltenders. I, I love getting goaltenders. He uh, played for the Flyers and the Kings from 2000 to 2023. He, he played in the Czech Republic before and after. He, he had a pretty long career. He was a good TTMer, uh, signed, last signed in March of 2023. I know you got him in person, right? You got him in an in-person autograph? Yeah, back when he was with the Flyers around 2003 or so. Right before, I think it was like weeks before he got traded out to the Kings there. He played, what, maybe a season and a half with the Kings. I think it was after the lockout. He went back to the Czech Republic. And when the when the lockout got settled, he's like, nah, I think I'm going to stay back over here again. So, yep. Well, Ro- Roman Czech, Monica, he was uh, 52 years old. Yeah. Uh, we lost Dave Stenhouse this week. Stenhouse was a pitcher for the Washington Senators, the second incarnation of the Senators from 1962 to 64. He pitched in the 1962 All-Star game as well. He was an excellent TTMer. I got him at least one site that I know of. He was 90 years old. And finally, we lost, lost DJ Hayden. DJ Hayden was uh, Oakland Raiders' first round pick in the 2013 NFL draft. He played for the Raiders, the Lions, and the Jags from 2013 to 2020. He didn't do much uh, TTM. He last TTM in April of 2014. I believe he died in a car accident, right, Drew? He was only 33 years old. Yeah, it was like him and a bunch of others all in a car that got just straight up T boned and it killed, I think, everybody except for one person in that in his car. Well, you know, we are sorry for your loss. So something goes out to you and your family if you lost anyone this week. Um, and that wraps up our Vern Rap Minute. Next up, we're going to do a little TTM returns. Was our mailbox full this week? Let's take a look at this week's TTM returns. All right, Drew, if you have to give out TTM return grades for us, I'm going to give you a D minus. I'm going to, I'm going to take a, a, a solid C minus, okay? Yeah, I, I wouldn't even give myself an E minus this week. This was this was an absolute failure. <laughs> <laughs> I I'll do mine because guys, Drew got shut out. Can you believe yeah, it? Yeah, my, my my segment is gonna be very short. <laughs> I I got three back. Uh, I got three cards back from Steve Rogan, former quarterback with the New England Patriots. I got his uh eighty five tops card, his eighty eight tops card, and his eighty nine tops card. I think it was like the last one. Um, and it took a couple weeks. Steve Grogan's a great TTM or uh, he, he's almost automatic, right, Drew? Yes, absolutely. I got George Wansley, who played for the Colts. He got him in his 86th tops card. George was a running back with, with the Colts, and I got him on his 86th tops card. And uh, let's see, where did, where did George go to school? He went to Mississippi State. So. Nice. This this uh, was a really quick turnaround. He signed in Black Sharpie, and then finally I got uh, two, three, four, 
four things back from Greg Larson, who played for, he was a center for the New York Giants back in the 60s. He, he actually sent me a 69 Topps card, which I did right. not have, and he, that, that was one of his. He also sent me a 73 Topps card, so uh, I had, that's what I had sent him to autograph. He sent me that, and he sent me a 5 by 7 uh, picture that right. he signed. So very nice, n- nice little returns. I've got four or five uh, TTMs to go out this weekend. I'm gonna gonna finish work, and I got the en- envelopes are already done. The cards are already pulled. I just have to do the labels and get get those all done. So, uh, you know, I, it's kind of a weird time. I the they had I I got a lot out there, but my returns are really slow. Yeah, that's about where I'm at too. I mean, like I said, you know, I sent out 17 on past Monday, so. Uh... I get, okay, so you said D minus. I guess I can accept that because I mean it's an A for effort. I'm at least trying. I sent seventeen I damn things out. So yeah, I'll 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 take that then. So, but yeah, overall achievement. Oh boy, this was a this was a bad week. This is my second shutout week that I've had here in the last <laughs> month month and a half, something like that. I mean, it's been a uh, I've had a couple of shutout weeks, which I never seem to get here since we started all of this. So uh, yeah. Nothing in the mail for me. I did have a purchase that came in, and I just made another purchase as well. But uh, got the eighty-eight, eighty-nine Brian Hayward card. Um, I think it was autographed and had it for sale for a couple bucks. And it's like I can either sit down and write to this guy for you know like the fourth time that I've sent to him, or I just you know pay two bucks and some shipping and get this off eBay. And I'm like, okay, autographed den is reputable. They've got good stuff. It's cheap. I'm gonna go ahead and pay it. So went ahead and got that. Oh, okay, so. that's a nice that's a nice signature too. Yeah, it's in the. It's I've, it's like in a purple sharpie or so, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it looks nice at least. So where, did, there, so. where did he play as well? He, I know he played for the Canadians, but where else did he play? Uh, he was the starter in Winnipeg in the uh, early 80s, then went to the Canadians, and he was the backup of Patrick Waugh out there. Uh, after that, he went over to the Minnesota North Star. That's where I remember him as a North Star. Yeah, 1989, 90, somewhere around there, I want to say, and he was the backup to John Casey up there the year that they went to the cup finals against Pittsburgh. Yep. That's where I, that's kind of, I don't know why I remember him as a North star. Yeah. I think, well, that's kind of when the first, uh, other than tops first uh, card sets came out. So everything to fix him as a North star, it seems like there for a bit. And then when the uh, San Jose sharks split off from the North stars, he was one of the players that the sharks took in the uh, expansion draft out of the North stars there. So we had a pretty good career. Yeah. Bounced around a bit, but I mean, he played on some solid teams there. I mean, anytime you're backup Patrick, wow, that's the, uh, that's pretty high status right there. And backup goalies, it's like the backup quarterback in football, right? These guys can, yep. they, they, there's a lot of guys that make a career out of being a backup uh, goalie. You know, you play once a week or twice, you know, three times a month and you, yep. you don't work, you don't work too hard. And it's, a, it's not a bad deal. Yeah. I mean, you just got to be there ready to be called in and start when you need to, whether it's a spot start or an injury replacement or something like that. And I mean, some guys can make a really great career out. Some can spin it into being a starter somewhere else. So, yeah. yeah. Not a bad deal. All right, buddy. Well, hopefully you get some some suggest successes this week, and and we'll have we'll have uh we'll get some feedback from Drew on our Wednesday show as always. All right, Drew, let's wrap this up. Put a bow on it, okay? Sounds good. All right. First, we want to thank Clemente Lisi. We love Clemente. Clemente's world. Hopefully, you're enjoying uh that every month. Thank you, Clemente. We we love the feedback on the Toronto show. Of course, Greg Poole from Can Cam's Ministries. What a what a nice guy! What a great cause! Uh, please help him out the best you can. Um, on Wednesday show, we're gonna have collector Bruce McClure. So uh, we'll learn about uh, what Bruce's passion is, and that will be on Wednesday show. On Saturday show, we will have Les Wolf. We will talk about uh, potential Hall of Famers in in the world of baseball. So we're gonna talk. We'll talk to Les about that. And I have uh, Bob Kendrick, who is the president of the Negro League Hall of Fame in Kansas City. So he will. We will be talking to Bob as well. Drew, anything else before I let you go? No, just uh, well. Hopefully, I'll come back with some good stuff to talk about there from the uh, Dallas Card Show. Here, We're gonna be heading out there in about half an hour. All right. Best of luck. Hopefully, you get a nice. No, don't, 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 don't make me feel bad and go buy like a ten thousand box card for fifteen dollars or something. <laughs> hey, if I come across it, I'm going to be grabbing one of those. So we'll see. I, we'll see if we I know. I love that. I love TTM fodder. I really do. That's the best. That's I, that one of the things I love about getting to the show. And the hunt is almost as fun as is get, getting the card itself, isn't it? Yes, definitely. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. You have a great week. We will talk to you on Wednesday. Guys, wishing everyone many happy returns. We will see you for on our Wednesday show, TTMCast 101. Everyone, be good.